Hello, uh, and welcome to week 22 of our virtual reading series of Plague Spring Company, the virtual reading group of Shakespeare and Company in Minnesota. Uh, this week, we are bringing the heat with Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, and it's cast by our very own artistic director, George M. Ressler. Um, it's a story of love, passion, death, snakes. So sit back, relax, stay cool, and enjoy this wonderful show. Okay. Nay, but this dotage of our generals o'erflows the measure. Those his goodly eyes that o'er the files and musters of the war have glowed like plated Mars, now bend, now turn, the office and devotion of their view upon a tawny front. His captain's heart, which in the scuffles of great fights hath burst the buckles on his breast, reneges all temper and has become the bellows and the fan to cool a gypsy's lust. Look where they come. Take but good note and you shall see in him the triple pillar of the world transformed into a strumpet's fool. Behold and see. If it be love indeed, tell me how much. There's beggary in the love that can be reckoned. I'll set a born how far to be beloved. Then must thou needs find out new heaven, new earth. N news, my good lord, from Rome. Ah, uh, grates me the sum. Nay, hear them, Antony. Fulvia perchance is angry, or who knows if the scarce beaded Caesar have not sent his powerful mandate to you. Do this or this, take in that kingdom and enfranchise that, perform it or else we damn thee. How, my love? Perchance, nay, and most like, you must not stay here longer. Your dismission is come from Caesar. Therefore, hear it, Antony. Where's Fulvia's process, Caesar's? I would say both. Call in the messengers, as I am Egypt's queen. Thou blushest, Antony, and that blood of thine is Caesar's homage, or else so thy cheek pays shame when shrill tongue Fulvia scolds. The messengers! Let Rome and Tiber melt and the wide arch of the ranged empire fall. Here is my space, kingdoms are clay, our dungy earth alike feeds beast as man. The nobleness of life is to do thus, when such a mutual pair and such a twain can do it, in which I bind on pain of punishment the world to wheat we stand up peerless. Excellent falsehood. Oh. Why did he marry Fulvia and not love her? I'll seem the fool I am not. Antony will be himself. Stirred by Cleopatra now for the love of love and her soft hours. Let's not confound the time with conference harsh. There's not a minute of our lives should stretch without some pleasure now. What sport tonight? Hear the ambassador. Oh, fie, wrangling queen, whom everything becomes to chide, to laugh, to weep, whose every passion fully strives to make itself in thee fair and admired. No messenger but thine and all alone. Tonight we'll wander through the streets and note the qualities of the people. Come, my queen. Last night you did desire it. <laughs> <laughs> Speak is not Caesar, to us. Is Caesar with Antonius prized so slight? Sir, sometimes when he is not Antony, he comes too short of that great property which still should go with Antony. I am full sorry that he approves the common liar who thus speaks of him at Rome, but I will hope of better deeds tomorrow. Rest you happy. Lord Alexis, sweet Alexis, most anything Alexis, almost most absolute Alexis. Where's the soothsayer that you praised so to the queen? Oh, that I knew this husband, which you say must change his horns with garlands. Soothsayer, your will. Is this the man? Is it you, sir, that knows things? In nature's infinite book of secrecy, a little I can read. Show him your hand. Bring in the banquet quickly. Wine enough, Cleopatra's health to drink. 
Good sir, give me good fortune. I make not, but foresee. Oh, pray then, foresee me one. You shall be yet far fairer than you are. Oh, he means in flesh? <laughs> no, you shall paint when you are old. Oh, wrinkles forbid. <laughs> Vex not his presence. Be attentive. <laughs> you shall be more beloving than beloved. I had rather heat my liver with drinking. Nay, hear him. Good now, some excellent fortune. Let me be married to three kings in a forenoon and widow them all. <laughs> Let me have a child at 50 to whom Herod of Jewry may do homage. Find me to marry me with Octavius Caesar and companion me with my mistress. You shall outlive the lady whom you serve. <laughs> Excellent. I love long life better than figs. <laughs> you have seen and proved a fairer former fortune than that which is to approach. Then belikes my children shall have no names. Prithee, how many boys and wenches must I have? If every of your wishes had a womb, and fertile every wish, a million. Out, fool. I forgive thee for a witch. Oh, you think none but your sheets are privy to your wishes. <laughs> oh, now come. Tell Iris hers. Oh, we'll know all our fortunes. Mine and most of our fortunes tonight shall be drunk to bed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a palm presages chastity, if nothing else. E'en as the overflowing Nihilus presageth famine. Go, you wild bedfellow. You cannot soon say. <laughs> Nay, if an oily palm be not a fruitful prognostication, I cannot scratch mine ear. <laughs> Prithee, tell her but a worky day fortune. Your fortunes are alike. <laughs> but how? Well, but how? Give me particulars. I have said. Well, I am not an inch of fortune better than she? Well, if you were but an inch of fortune better than I, where would I choose it? Well, not my husband's nose. <laughs> or wor our worser thoughts heavens mend. Alexis, Come, his fortune, his fortune. Let him marry a woman that cannot go, sweet Isis. I beseech thee, and let her die too, and give him a worse, and let worse follow worse, till the worst of all follow him, laughing to his grave. <laughs> he fooled a cuckold. <laughs> Good Isis, hear me this prayer, though thou deny me a matter of more weight. Good Isis, I beseech thee. Oh, amen, dear goddess, hear that prayer of the people. For as it is a heartbreaking to see a handsome man loose wived, so it is a deadly sorrow to behold a foul knave uncuckolded. Therefore, dear Isis, keep decorum and fortune him accordingly. Amen. Lo now. If it lay in their hands to make me a cuckold, they would make themselves whores, but they'd do it. Hush, here comes Antony. Not he, the queen. Saw you, my lord. No, lady. Was he not here? No, no madam. madam. He was disposed to mirth, but on the sudden, a Roman thought hath struck him. And Obarbus. Madam. Seek him and bring him ever. Where's Alexis? Here, at your service, my lord approaches. We will not look upon him. Go with us. Fulvia, thy wife first came into the field. Against my brother Lucius. Aye, but soon that war had end, and all the time state made friends of them, jointing their forces against Caesar, whose better issue in the war from Italy upon the first encounter drave them. Well, what worst? The nature of bad news infects the teller. Yeah, when it concerns the fool or coward. On, things that are past are done with me. Tis thus, who tells me true, though in his tale lie death, I hear him as he flattered. 
Babinia is stiff as uh, this is stiff news, hath with his Parthian force extended Asia from Euphrates, his conquering banner shook from Syria to Lydia to Ionia, whilst Anthony, thou wouldst say. Oh, my lord. Speak to me home. Mince not the general tongue. Name Cleopatra as she is called in Rome. Rail thou in Fulvius phrase and taunt my faults with such full license as both truth and malice have power to utter. Well, then we bring forth weeds when our quick winds lie still and our ills told us is our earring. Fare thee well a while. At your noble pleasure. From Sicium, how the news? Speak there. Uh, there's a man of uh, the, the man from Sicyon. Is there such an one? He stays upon your will. Let him appear. In strong Egyptian fetters, I must break or lose myself in dotage. Fulvia, thy wife, is dead. Or died she? In Sicyon, her length of sickness, with what else more serious importeth thee to know, this bears. Will bear me. There's a great spirit gone. Thus did I desire it. What our contempts often doth often hurl from us, we wish at ours again. The present pleasure by revolution lowering does become the opposite of itself. She's good being gone. The hand could pluck her back that shoved her on. I must from this enchanting queen break off. 10,000 harms more than the ills I know my idleness doth hatch. How oh, now, Edebarus? What's your pleasure, sir? I must with haste from hence. Why then, we kill our women. <laughs> we see how mortal an unkindness does to them if they suffer our departure. Death's the word. I must be gone. Under a compelling occasion, let women die. It were pity to cast them away for nothing, though between them and a great cause, they should be esteemed nothing. Cleopatra, catching but the least noise of this, dies instantly. Oh, I have seen her die 20 times upon far poorer moment. I do think, there is metal in death, which commits some loving act upon her. She has such a clarity in dying. She is cunning past man's thought. Alax or no, her passions are made of nothing but the finest part of love. We cannot call her winds and waters, sighs and tears. They are greater storms and tempests than almanacs can report. This cannot be cunning in her. If it be, she makes a shower of rain as well as Jove. I had never seen her. Oh, sir, you had then left unseen a wonderful piece of work, which not to have been blessed with all would have discredited your travel. Olvia is dead. Sir? Olvia is dead. Fulvia. Dead. Why, sir, give the gods a thankful sacrifice. When it pleases their de deities to make the wife of a man from him, it shows to man the tailors of the earth, comforting therein that when old robes are worn out, there are members to make new. If there were no more women than Fulvia, then you indeed had a cut and the case to be lamented. This grief is crowned with consolation. Your old smock brings forth a new petticoat. And indeed, the tears live in an onion that should water this sorrow. The business she hath broached in the state cannot endure my absence. And the business you have broached here cannot be without you, especially that of Cleopatra's, which wholly depends upon your abode. No more light answers. Let our officers have notice what we purpose. I shall break the cause of our expedience to the queen and get her leave to part. For not alone the death of Fulvia with more urgent touches do strongly speak to us, but the letters too of many our contriving friends in Rome petition us at home. Sextus Pompeius 
hath given the dare to Caesar and commands the empire of the sea. Our slippery people, whose love is never linked to the deserver till his deserts are past, begin to throw Pompey the Great and all his dignities upon his son, who high in name and power, higher than both in blood and life, stands up for the main soldier, whose quality is going on the sides of the world may danger. Much is breeding, which like the courser's hair, hath yet but life and not a serpent's poison. Say our pleasure to whose to such whose places under us require our quick remove from hence. I shall do it. Where is he? I did not see him since. See where he is, who's with him, what he does. I did, I did not send you. If you find him sad, say I am dancing. If in mirth, report that I am sudden sick. Quick and return. <sighs> Madam, methinks if you did love him dearly, you do not hold the method to enforce the like from him. What should I do? I do not. In each thing, give him way, cross him in nothing. Thou teachest like a fool the way to lose him. Tempt him not so too far, I wish forbear. In time we hate that which we often fear. <sighs> but here comes Antony. Oh, I am sick and sullen. I am sorry to give breathing to my purpose. Oh, help me away, dear Charmian, I shall fall. Oh, I cannot be thus long. The sides of nature will not sustain it. Now, my dearest queen. Pray you stand farther from me. What's the matter? Oh, I know by that same eye there's some good news. What says the married woman you may go? Would she had never given you leave to come? Oh, let her not say tis I keep you here. I have no power upon you. Hers you are. The gods best know. Oh, never was there a queen so mightily betrayed. Yet at the first I saw the treasons planted. Cleopatra. Why should I think? You can be mine and, and, and true, though... You, in swearing, shake the throne at gods, who have been false with to, to, to Fulvia. Oh, riotous madness to be entangled with those mouth-made vows which break themselves in swearing. Most sweet queen. Oh, nay, pray you seek no color for your going, but bid farewell and go. When you sued staying, then was the time for words. No going then, eternity was in your lips and eyes. Bliss in our brows bent, none of our parts so poor, but was a race of heaven. They are so still, or thou, the greatest soldier of the world, art turned the greatest liar. How oh, now, lady? I would I had thy inches. Thou shouldst know there were a heart in Egypt. Hear me, queen. The strong necessity of time commands our services a while, but my full heart remains in use with you. Our Italy shines o'er with civil swords. Sextus Pompeius makes his approaches to the port of Rome. Equality of two domestic powers breeds scrupulous faction. The hated grown to strength are newly grown to love. The condemned Pompey, rich in his father's honor, creeps apace into the hearts of such as have not thrived upon the present state, whose numbers threaten, the quietness grown sick of rest would purge by any desperate change. My more particular, and that which most with you should safe my going, is Fulvia's death. The rage from folly could not give me freedom. It does from childishness. Can... Fulvia die? She's dead, my queen. Look here. At thy sovereign leisure, read the garboils she awaits. At the last best, see when and where she died. Oh, false love. Where be the sacred vials thou shouldst fill with sorrowful water? Oh, now I see, I see in Fulvia's death how mine received shall be. Quarrel no more, but be prepared to know the purposes I bear, which are or cease as you shall give the advice. By the fire that quickens Nihilus' slime, I go from hence, thy soldier, servant, 
making peace or war as thou effects. Oh God, my lay Charmian, come, but let it be. I am quickly ill and, and well, so Antony loves. My precious queen forbear and give true evidence to his love, which stands an honorable trial. So Fulvia told me, I prithee turn aside and weep for her. Thou bid adieu to me and say the tears belong to Egypt. Good now, play one scene of excellent dissembling and let it look like perfect honor. You'll keep my blood no more. You can do better yet, but this is meekly. Now by my sword. And target. Oh, still he mends, but this is not the best. Look, pretty Charmian, how this Herculean Roman does become the carriage of his chafe. I'll leave you, lady. Courteous lord, one word. Sir, you and I must part. But that's not it. Sir, you and I have loved, but there's not it. That you know well. Something it is I would... Oh, my oblivion is a very Antony, and I am all forgotten. But that your royalty holds idleness, your subject, I should take you for idleness itself. Oh, Tis sweating labor to bear such idleness so near the heart as Cleopatra this. But sir, forgive me, since my becomings kill me when they do not, I you well, well to you. Your honor calls you hence, therefore be deaf to my unpitied folly, and all the gods go with you. Upon your sword sit laurel victory and smooth success be strewed before your feet. Let us go. Come. Our separation so abides and flies that thou residing here goes yet with me, and I, hence fleeting here, remain with thee. Away! You may see, Lapidus, and henceforth know, it is not Caesar's natural vice to hate our great competitor. From Alexandria, this is the news. He fishes, drinks, and wastes the lamps of night in revel is not more manlike than Cleopatra, nor the queen of Ptolemy more womanly than he hardly gave audience or vouchsafe to think he had partners. You shall find there a man who is the abstract of all faults that all men follow. I cannot hear thee, Lepidus. I must not up? think there are evils now that darken all his goodness. His faults in him seem as the spots of heaven, more fiery by night's blackness, hereditary rather than purchased, that what he cannot change, that what he chooses. <laughs> you are too indulgent. Let's grant it is not amiss to tumble on the bed of Ptolemy. To give a kingdom for a mirth, to sit and keep the turn of tippling with a slave, to reel the streets at noon and stand the buffet with knaves that smells of sweat. Say, this becomes him, as his composure must be rare indeed, whom these things cannot blemish. Yet must Anthony no way excuse his foils when we do bear so great weight in his lightness. He filled his vacancy with his voluptuousness, full surfeits and dryness of his bones. Call on him for it, but to confound such time that drums him from his sport and speaks as loud as his own state and ours, just to be chid as we rate boys who, being mature in knowledge, pawn their experience to their present pleasure and so rebel the judgment. Here's more news. Thy biddings have been done, and every hour, most noble Caesar, shalt thou have report how tis abroad. Pompey is strong at sea, and it appears he is beloved of those that only have feared Caesar. To the ports the discontents repair, and men's reports give him much wronged. I should have known no less. It hath been taught as from the primal state that he which is was wished until he were, and the ebbed man near love till near worth love. Hm. Come, dear, by being lacked, this common body like to a vagabond flying upon the stream goes to and back, lacking the 
bearing tide to rot itself with motion. Uh, uh, Caesar, um, I, I bring thee word. Menecrates and Minas, famous pirates, make the sea serve them, which they ear and wound with keels of every kind. Many hot inroads they make in Italy. The borders maritime lack blood to think on it and flush youth revolt. No vessel can peep forth, but but tis as soon taken as seen, for Pompey's name strikes more than could his war resisted. Antony, leave thy lascivious wassels when thou once was beaten from Medina, where thou slewest Hirtius and Ponsa, consults at thy heel that famine flew, thou fought against so daintily brought up with patience more than savages could suffer. And to drink the stale of horses and the gilded puddle which beasts would cough at, thy palate when did deign the roughest berry on the rudest hedge, yea, like the stag when snow the pasture sheets, the barks of trees thou browsed on the Alps. It is reported thou didst eat strange flesh which some did die to look on and all this it wounds thine honor that i speak it now was born so like a soldier that thy cheek so much as length not tis pity of him <sighs> let his shames quickly drive him to rome tis time we twain did show ourselves in the field and to that end assemble we immediately counsel pompey thrives in our idleness Tomorrow, Caesar, I shall be furnished to inform you rightly by both by what sea and land I can able to front this present time. To which encounter it is my business too. Farewell. Farewell, farewell my lord. What, sh what you shall know meantime of stirs abroad, I shall beseech you, sir, to let me be partaker. Doubt not, sir. I knew it for my bond. Shani Ann! Uh, madam? <laughs> Give me to drink Mandragora. Oh, why, madam? That I might sleep out this great gap of time. My Antony is away. You think of him too much. Oh, tis treason. Madam, I trust not so. Well, eunuch. Marianne! Ah, what's your highness pleasure? Not now to hear thee sing. I take no pleasure in aught an eunuch has. It is well for thee that being unseminar, thy freer thoughts may not fly forth of Egypt. Hast thou affections? Oh, yes, gracious madam. Indeed? Not indeed, madam, for I can do nothing, but what is indeed is honest to be done. Yet I have fierce affections, and think what Venus did with Mars. Oh, Charmian, where thinks thou he is now? Stands he, or sits he, or does he walk, or is he on his horse? <laughs> oh, happy horse, to bear the weight of Antony. <laughs> Do bravely, horse, for worse thou whom thou movest, the demi atlas of this earth, the arm, and the burtonet of man. Oh, he's speaking now, or murmuring, where's my serpent of old Nile? <laughs> for so he calls me. Now I feed myself with most delicious poison. Think on me that I am with Phoebus, amorous pinches black and wrinkled deep in time. Broad fronted Caesar, when thou was here above the ground, I was a morsel for a monarch and great Pompey would stand and make his eyes grow in my brow. There would be he anchor his aspect and die with looking on his life. The sovereign of Egypt, hail. How much unlike art thou, Mark Antony, yet coming from him that great medicine hath with his taint gilded thee. How goes it with my brave Mark Antony? Last thing he did, dear queen, he kissed the last of many doubled kisses, this orient pearl. He 
beat sticks in my heart. My ear must pluck it thence. <clears throat> uh, good friends, quoth he, say the firm Roman to great Egypt sends this treasure of an oyster, at whose foot, to mend the petty present, I will peace or opulent throne with kingdoms, all the east, say thou shall call her mistress. So he nodded, and soberly did mount an armed gaunt steed, who neighed so high, and what I would have spoke was beastly dumbed by him. What, was he sad or merry? Like to the time of the year, between the extremes of hot and cold, he was not sad nor merry. Well, divided disposition. Note him, no, note him, good Charmian. Tis the man, but note him, he was not sad, for he would shine on those that make their looks by his. He was not merry, which seemed to tell them his remembrance lay in Egypt with his joy. But between both, oh, heavenly mingle, beest thou sad or merry, the violence of either thee becomes. So does it no man's else? Methought my posts? I, madam, twenty several messengers. Why do you send so thick? Who's born that day, when I forget to send to Antony, shall die a beggar. Ink and paper, Charmian. Welcome, my good Alexis. Did I, Charmian, ever love Caesar so? Oh, that brave Caesar. Choked with such another emphasis, say the brave Antony. The valiant Caesar. By Isis, I will give thee bloody teeth if thou with Caesar paragon again, my man of men. By your most gracious pardon, I sing but after you. I sell in days when I was green in judgment, cold in blood to say as I said then. But come away, get me ink and paper. He shall have every day a several greeting or I'll unpeople Egypt. If the great gods be just, they shall assist the deeds of justice men. No, worthy Pompey, that what they do delay, they not deny. Whiles we are suitors to their throne, decays the thing we sue for. We, ignorant of ourselves, think of often our own our harms which the wise powers deny us for our good, so find we profit by losing our prayers. I shall do well. The people love me, and the sea is mine. My powers are crescent, and my auguring hope says it will come to the full. Mark Antony in Egypt sits at dinner, and will make no wars without doors. Caesar gets money where he loses hearts. Lepidus flatters both. Of both is flattered, but he neither loves nor either cares for him. Caesar and Lepidus are in the field, a mighty strength they carry. <laughs> Where have you this? Tis false. From Silvia, sir. He dreams. I know they are in Rome together, looking for Antony. But all the charms of love, salt Cleopatra, soften they wand lip. Let witchcraft join with beauty lust with both. Tie up the libertine in a field of feast. Keep his brain fuming. Epicurean cooks sharpen with cloyless sauce his appetite, that sleep and feeding may prorogue his honor even till a leaf dullness. How now, Various? This is most certain that I shall deliver. Mark Antony is every hour in Rome expected. Since he went from Egypt, tis a space for farther travel. I could have given less matter of better ear. Minas, I did not think this amorous surfeiter would have donned his helm for such a petty war. His soldiership is twice the other twain. But let us rear the higher our opinion that our stirring can, from the lap of Egypt's widow, pluck the ne'er-lust-wearied Antony. I cannot hope Caesar and Antony shall well greet together. His wife that's dead did trespasses to Caesar, his brother warred upon him, although I think not moved by Antony. I know not, Venus, how lesser enmities may give way to greater, 
were it not that we stand up against them all, were pregnant they should square between themselves, for they have entertained cause enough to draw their swords. But how the fear of us may cement their divisions and bind up the petty differences, we yet not know. Be it as our gods will have, it only stands our lives upon to use our strongest hands. Come, Minas. Good Enobarbus, tis a worthy deed, and shall become you well to entreat your captain to soft and gentle speech. I shall entreat him to answer like himself. If Caesar move him, let Antony look over Caesar's head and speak as loud as Mars. By Jupiter, were I the wearer of Antonio's beard, I would not shave today. Tis not a time for private stomaching. Every time, sirs, for the matter that is then born into it. But small to greater matters must give way. Not if the small come first. Your speech is passion, but pray you stir no embers up. Here comes the noble Antony. And yonder Caesar. If we compose well here to Parthia, hark Ventidius. I do not know, Messinas. Ask Agrippa. Noble friends, that which combined us was most great, and let not a leaner action rend us. What's amiss? May it be gr gently heard when we debate our trivial difference loud. We do commit murder and healing wounds. Then, noble partners, the rather for I earnestly beseech, touch you the sourest points with sweetest terms, nor curseness grow to the matter. Tis spoken well. Were we before our armies, and to fight I should do thus. Welcome to Rome. Thank you. Sit. Sit, sir. Nay, then. I learn you take things ill which are not so, or being concern you not. <laughs> I must be laughed at, if or for nothing or a little. I should say myself offended, and with you chiefly of the world more laughed at, that I should once name you derogatively, when to sound your name, it not concerned me. My being in Egypt, Caesar, what was to you? No more than my residing here at Rome might be to you in Egypt. Yet if you there did practice on my state, your in Egypt might be my question. How intend you practiced? Hmm. You may be pleased to catch at mine intent by what did here befall me. Your wife and brother made wars upon me, and their contestation was theme for you. You were the word of war. You do mistake your business. My brother never did urge me in his act. I did inquire it and have my learning from some true reports that drew their swords with you. Did he not rather discredit my authority with yours and make the wars alike against my stomach, having alike your cause? Of this, my letters before did satisfy you. If you'll patch a quarrel, as matter whole you have to make it with, it must not be with this. Hmm. You praise yourself by laying defects of judgment to me, but you patched up your excuses. No, not so, not so. I know you could not lack, I'm certain on it. Very necessity of this thought that I, your partner in this cause against which he fought, could not with graceful eyes attend those wars which fronted mine own peace. As for my wife, I would you had her spirit in such another. The third of the world is yours, which with a snaffle you may pace easy, but not such a wife. Would we all had such wives that the men might go to war with the women. So much uncurbable her garboils, Caesar, made out of her impatience, which not wanted shrewdness of policy too. I, grieving Grant, did you too much disquiet. For that you must but say, I could not help it. I wrote to you 
when rioting in Alexandria, you did pocket up my letters and with taunts did guide me my missive out of audience. Sir, he fell upon me ere admitted then. Three kings I had newly feasted and did want of what was in the morning, but next day I told him of myself, which was as much as to have asked him pardon. Let this fellow be nothing of our strife, if we contend. Out of our question, wipe him. You have broken the article of your oath, which you shall never have tongue to charge me with. Soft Caesar. No, Lepidus, let him speak. The honor is sacred, which he talks on now, supposing that I lacked it. But on, Caesar, the article of my oath. <laughs> to lend me arms and aid when I required them, the which you both denied. And neglected, rather. And then when poisoned hours had bound me up from mine own knowledge as nearly as I may, I'll play the penitent to you. But mine honesty shall not make poor my greatness, nor my power work without it. Truth is that Fulvia, to have me out of Egypt, made wars here, for which myself as the ignorant motive do so far ask pardon as befits mine honor to stoop in such a case. Is noble spoken. If it might please you to enforce no further the griefs between you, that to forget them quite were to remember that the present need speaks to atone you. Worthily spoke Messinus. Or if you borrow one another's love for the instant, you may, when you hear no more words of Pompey, return to it again. You shall have time to wrangle in when you have nothing else to say. Thou art a soldier only, speak no more. Oh, the truth should be silent. I have almost forgot. You wrong this presence, therefore speak no more. Go to then, your considerate stone. I do not much dislike the matter, but the manner of his speech, for it cannot be we shall remain in friendship. Our condition so differing in their acts. Yet if I knew what hoop should hold us staunch from edge to edge of the world, I would pursue it. Give me leave, Caesar. Mm -mm -mm. Speak, Agrippa. Thou hast a sister by the mother's side, admired Octavia. Great Mark Antony is now a widower. Seem not so, Agrippa. <laughs> if Cleopatra heard you, your reproof were deserved of rashness. <laughs> I am not married, Caesar. Let me hear Agrippa further speak. To hold you in perpetual amity, to make you brothers, and to knit your hearts with an unslipping knot, take Antony Octavia to his wife, whose beauty claims no worse a husband than the best of men whose virtue and whose general graces speak that which none else can utter. By this marriage, all little jealousies, which now seem great, and all great fears, which now import their dangers, would then be nothing. Truths would be tales, where now half, tru half tales be truths. Her love to both would each to other, and all loves to both draw after her, Pardon what I have spoke, for tis a studied, not a present thought, by duty ruminated. Will Caesar speak? Till he hears how Antony is touched with what is spoke already. What power is in Agrippa, if I would say, Agrippa, be it so, to make this good? The power of Caesar and his power unto Octavia. May I never, to this good purpose, so that so fairly shows, dream of impediment. Let me have thy hand further this act of grace. And from this hour, the heart of brothers governs, govern in our loves and sway our great designs. Here's my hand. A sister, I bequeath you, whom no brother did ever love so dearly. Let her live to join our kingdoms in our hearts and never fly off our loves again. Happily, amen. I did not think to draw my sword against Pompey, for he hath laid strange courtesies and uh, great of late upon me. 
I must thank him only, lest my remembrance suffer ill report with heel of that, defy him. Time calls upon of, of us must Pompey presently be sought, or else he seeks us out. Where lies he? About the Mount Messina. What is his strength by land? Great and increasing, but by sea he is an absolute master. So is the fame, would we have had spoke together. Haste me for it, yet ere we put up ourselves in arms, dispatch me the business we have talked of. Mm, with most gladness. And do invite you to my sister's view, whither straight I'll lead you. Let us, Lepidus, not lack your company. Noble Lantity, not sickness should detain me. Welcome from Egypt, sir. Half the heart of Caesar, worthy Messinus, my honorable friend Agrippa. Good, Eno Barbus. We have cause to be glad that matters are so well digested. You stayed well by it in Egypt? Aye, <laughs> sir. We did sleep day out of countenance and made the night light with drinking. Eight wild boars roasted whole at a breakfast, but twelve persons there. Is this true? Oh, that was but a fly by an eagle. We had much more monstrous matter of feast, which worthily deserved noting. Oh, she's a most triumphant lady, if report be square to her. When she first met Mark Antony, she pursed up his heart upon the river of Sidness. There she appeared indeed, or my reporter devised well for her. I will tell you. The barge she sat on, like a burnished throne, burnt on the water. The poop was beaten gold, purple the sails, and so perfumed that the winds were lovesick with them. The oars were silver, which to the tune of flutes kept stroke and made the water which they beat to follow faster as amorous of their strokes. For her own person, it beggared all description. She did lie in her pavilion, cloth of gold or tissue, or picturing that Venus where we see the fancy outwork nature. On each side stood pretty dimpled boys, like smiling cupids, with diverse colored fans, whose wind did seem to blow the delicate cheeks, which they did cool, and what they undid, did. Oh, rare for Antony. Her gentle women, like the Nereides, so many mermaids tended her the eyes and made their bends adornings. At the helm, a seeming mermaid steers, the silken tackle swell with a touch of those flower soft hands that yarly frame the office. From the barge, a strange, invisible perfume hits the sense of the adjacent wars. The city cast her people out upon her, and Antony, enthroned in the marketplace, did sit alone, whistling to the air, which, but for vacancy, had gone to gaze on Cleopatra too and made a gap in nature. <laughs> Rare Egyptian. Upon her landing, Antony sent to her, invited her to supper. She replied, it should be better if he became her guest, which she entreated. Our courteous Antony, whom ne'er the word of no woman heard speak, being barbed ten times over, goes to the feast and for his ordinary pays his heart, for what his eyes eat only. <laughs> Royal wench. <laughs> she made great Caesar lay his sword to bed. He plowed her and she cropped. <laughs> I saw her once hop 40 paces through the public street and having lost her breath, she spoke and panted that she did make defect perfection, and breathless power breathe forth. Oh, now Anthony, must, now Anthony must leave her utterly. Oh, never. He will not. 
age cannot wither her, nor customs steal her infinite variety. Other women cloy the appetites they feed, but she makes happy where most she satisfies. For vilest things become themselves in her that the holy priests bless her when she is riggish. If beauty, wisdom, modesty can settle the heart of Antony, Octavia is a blessed lottery to him. Let us go. Good Enobarbus, make yourself my guest whilst you abide here. Humbly, sir, I thank you. The world and my great office will sometimes divide me from your bosom. Good, my lord. Good night, sir. My Octavia read not my blemishes in the world's report. I have not kept my square, but that to come shall all be done by the rule. Good night, dear lady. Good night, my lord. Good night. Now, Sira, do you wish yourself in Egypt? Would I had never come from thence, nor you thither. If you can, your reason? I see it in my motion, have it not in my tongue. But yet, hie you to Egypt again. Say to me whose fortune shall rise higher, Caesar's or mine? Caesar's. Therefore, O Antony, stay not by his side. Thy demon, that thy spirit which keeps thee, is noble, courageous, high, unmatchable, where Caesar's is not. But near him, thy angel becomes a fear, as being or a power. Therefore, make space enough between you. Speak this no more. To none but thee, no more but when to thee. If thou dost play with him at any game, thou art sure to lose. And of that natural luck, he beats thee against the odds. Thy luster thickens when he shines by. I say again, thy spirit is all afraid to govern thee near him. But he away, tis noble. Get thee gone. Say to Ventidius I would speak with him. Shalt Parthia, yet art or hap, yet spoken true. The very dice obey him, and in our sports my better cunning faints under his chance. If we draw lots, he speeds, his cocks to win in the battle still of mine, when it is all to naught, and his quails ever beat mine, and hooped at odds. I will to Egypt, and though I make this marriage for my peace, in the east my pleasure lies. Oh, come, Ventidius, you must to Parthia. Your commission's ready. Follow me, and received. Trouble yourselves no further. Pray you hasten your generals after. Sir, Mark Antony will even but kiss Octavia and will follow. Till I shall see you in your soldier's dress, which will become you both. Farewell. We shall, as I conceive the journey, be at the mount before you, Lepidus. Your way is shorter. My purpose is to draw me much about. You're within two days upon me. Sir. Win two days upon me. <laughs> yes, sir. Good success. Farewell. Give me. Give me some music. Music. Moody food of us that trade in love. The music? How? Oh, let it alone. Let's to billiards. Come, Charmian. My arm is sore. Let's play with Mardian. As well a woman with an eunuch played as a with a woman. Ugh, come, you'll play with me, sir. As well as I can. And when goodwill is showed that come too short, the actor may plead pardon. All none now. Give me mine angle, we'll do the river. There, my music playing far off, I will betray tawny fin fishes. 
My bended hook shall pierce their slimy jaws, and as I draw them up, I'll think every one an Antony and say, Aha! You are caught. <laughs> Twas merry when you wagered on your angling, when your diver did hang a salt fish on his hook, which he with fervency drew up. That time, oh, times. I laughed him out of patience, and that night I laughed him into patience. <laughs> and next morn, ere the ninth hour, I drunk him to his bed, then put my tires and mantles on him whilst I wore his sword, Philippine. <laughs> oh, from Italy, ram thou thy fruitful tidings in mine ears that long time hath been barren. Madam, madam, Antonio's dead. If thou say so, villain, if thou sayest thy mistress well, but well and free, if thou so yield him, there is gold, and here my bluest veins to kiss a hand that kings have lip and trembled kissing. First, madam, he is well. Oh, why then? There's more gold. But, Sarah Mark, we use to say the dead uh, are well. Bring it to that, the gold. I, I grieve thee. Will I melt and pour down thy ill uttering throat? Good madam, hear me. Well, go to, I will. But there's no goodness in thy face. So, if Anthony be free and helpful, so tart a favor to trumpet such good tidings. If not well, thou shouldst come like a fury crowned with snakes, not like a formal man. Will it please you hear me? I have a mind to strike the air thou speak'st. Yet if thou say Antony lives, tis well. Or friends with Caesar, or not captive to him, I'll set thee in a shower of gold and hail rich pearls upon thee. Well, madam, he, he's well. Well said. And friends with Caesar. Thou art an honest man. Caesar and he are greater friends than ever. Make thee a fortune from me. But yet, madam, I... I do not like but yet. It does allay the good precedence. Fie upon but yet, oh, but yet is as a jailer to bring forth some monstrous malefactor. Pretty friend, pour out the pack of matter to mine ear, the good and bad together. He's friends with Caesar, in a state of health thou sayest, and thou sayest free. Free, madam? No, I made no such report. He's, he's bound unto Octavia. For what good turn? For the best turn in the bed? I am pale, Charmian. Madam, he's married to Octavia. Oh, the most infectious pestilence upon me! What? Madam, good madam, patience! What say you? <clears throat> Horrible villain, or I'll spurn thine eyes like bulls before me. I'll unhair thy head! Thou shalt be whipped with wire and stewed in brine, smutting and lingering pickle. Ah, yeah, my gracious madam, I bless you for you do me not the match. Say it is not so. A province I will give thee and make thy fortunes proud and blow thou hadst shall make thy peace for moving me to rage and I will boot thee with what Get beside thy modesty, can beg. Oh, he's married, madam. Thou hast lived too long. Oh, nay, then I'll run. What means you, madam? I have made no fault. Good madam, keep yourself within yourself. The man is innocent. Some innocence skate not the thunderbolt. Melt each up into Nile, and kindly creatures turn all to serpents. Call the slave again, though I am mad. I will not bite him. Call! He is afeard to come. I, I, I will not hurt him. 
These hands do lack nobility that they strike a meaner than myself, since I myself have given myself the cause. Come hither, sir! Though it be honest, it is never good to bring bad news. Give to a gracious message, a host of tongues, but let ill tidings tell themselves when they be felt. I have done my duty. Is he married? Can I hate thee worse than I do if thou again say yes? He's married, madam. Oh, the gods confound thee. Dost thou hold these to hear there still? Should I lie, madam? Oh, I would thou didst. So have my Egypt were submerged and made a cistern for scalded snakes. Go get the hands. Hadst thou narcissus in thy face to me, thou wouldst appear most ugly. Is he married? Oh, I crave your highness pardon. Is he married? Take no offense that I would not offend you. To punish me for what you make me do seems much unequal. He's married to Octavia. <sighs> that is his fault should make a knave of thee. Thou art not what thou art sure of. Get thee hence. The merchandise which thou hast brought from Rome are all too dear for, for me. Lie they upon thy hand and be undone by him. Good, your highness, patience. Praising Antony, I have dispraised Caesar. Many times, madam. <laughs> I am paid for it now. <gasps> Lead me from hence. I paint oh, Irish army. Tis no matter. Go to the fellow, good Alexis, bid him report the feature of Octavia, her years, her inclination. Let him not leave out the color of her hair. Bring me word quickly. Let him forever go. Let him not, Charmian, though he be painted one way like a gorgon, the other way a Mars. Bid you, Alexis, bring me word how tall she is. Sharp man, but do not speak to me. Lead me to my chamber. Your hostages I have, so have you mine, and we shall talk before we fight. Most meet that first we'd come to words, and therefore have we our written purposes before assent. Which if thou hast considered, let us know if twill tie up thy discontented sword and carry back Sicily much tall youth that else must perish. To you here. all three, the senators alone of this great world, chief factors for the gods, I do not know wherefore my father should revengers want, having a son and friends. Since Julius Caesar, who at Philippi the good Brutus ghosted, there saw you laboring for him. What was it that moved pale Cassius to conspire? And what made all honored, honest Roman Brutus with the armed rest, courtiers of beauteous freedom, to drench the capital? But that they would have one man but a man. And that is it hath made me rig my navy at whose burden the angered ocean foams, with which I meant to scourge the ingratitude that despiteful Rome cast on my noble father. Take your time. Thou canst not fear us, Pompey, with thy sails. We'll speak with thee at sea. At land, thou knowest how much we do o'ercount thee. <laughs> At land, indeed, thou dost o'ercount me of my father's house. But since the cuckoo builds not for himself, remain in it as thou mayest. Be pleased to tell us, for this 
is from the present, how you take the offers we have sent you. There's the point. Which do not be entreated to, but weigh what is worth embraced. <laughs> and what may follow? To try a larger fortune. You have made offer of Sicily, Sardinia, and I must rid all the sea of pirates, then to send measures of wheat to Rome. This agreed upon to part with unhacked edges and bear back our targes undinted. That's our offer. offer. That's know our then, offer. I came before you here, a man prepared to take this offer, but Mark Antony put me to some impatience. Though I lose the praise of telling it, you must know when Caesar and your brother were at blows, your mother came to Sicily and did find her welcome friendly. I have heard it, Pompey, and am well studied for a liberal thanks, which I do owe you. Let me have your hand. I did not think, sir, to have met you here. The beds in the east are soft, and thanks to you that called me timelier than my purpose hither, for I have gained by it. <laughs> I saw you last. There's a change upon you. Well, I know not what counts harsh fortune casts upon my face, but in my bosom shall she never come to make my heart her vassal. Well met here. <laughs> I hope so, Lepidus. Thus we are agreed. I crave our composition may be written and sealed between us. That's next to do. We'll feast each other ere we part. And let's draw lots who shall begin. That will I, Pompey. Oh, no, Antony, take the lot. But first or last, your fine Egyptian cookery shall have the fame. I have heard that Julius Caesar grew fat with feasting there. You have heard much? I have fair meaning, sir. And fair words to them. <laughs> then so much have I heard. And I have heard Apollodorus No carried... more of that he did so. What, I pray you? A certain queen to Caesar in a mattress. <laughs> I know thee now. How farest thou, soldier? Well, and well am I like to do, for I perceive for peace, feasts are toward. Uh, let me shake thy hand. I never hated thee. I have seen thee fight when I have envied thy behavior. Sir, I never loved you much, but I have praised ye when ye have well deserved ten times as much. And I have, as I have said you did. Enjoy thy plainness. It nothing ill becomes thee. Aboard my galley, I invite you all. Will you lead, lords? Show us the way. Show us the way. Come. This is the way. Thy father Pompey would ne'er have made this treaty. You have known, sir. At sea, I think. Hmm. We have, sir. You have done well by water. And you by land. I will praise any man that will praise me, though it cannot be denied what I have done by land. Nor what I have done by water. Yes, something you can deny for your own safety. You have been a great thief at sea. And you by land. Oh, there I can deny my land service. But give me your hand, Minas. If our eyes had authority, here they might take two thieves kissing. All men's faces are true, whatsoever their hands are. But there is never a fair woman that has a true face. No, slander, they steal hearts. We came hither to fight with you. For my part, I am sorry I turned to a drinking. <laughs> Poppy doth this day uh, laugh away his fortune. If he do, sure he cannot weep it back again. You have said, sir. We looked not for Mark Antony here. Pray you, is he married to Cleopatra? Caesar's sister is called Octavia. True, sir, she was the wife of Caius Marcellus. But she is now the wife of Marcus Antonius. Pray ye, sir? Tis true. 
then is Caesar and he forever knit together. If I were bound to divine of this unity, I would not prophesy so. I think the policy of that purpose made more in the marriage than the love of the parties. Oh, I think so too. But you shall find the band that seems to tie their friendship together will be the very strangler of their amity. Octavia is of a holy, cold, and still conversation. Who would not have his wife so? Not he that himself is not so, which is Mark Antony. He will to his Egyptian dish again. Then shall the size of Octavia blow the fire up in Caesar. And as I said before, that which is the strength of their amity shall prove the immediate author of their variance. Antony will use his affection where it is. He married, but his occasion here. And thus may it be. Come, sir, will you aboard? I have a health for you. I shall take it, sir. We have used our throats in Egypt. Come, let's away. Here they'll be, man. Some of their plants are ill-rooted already. <laughs> the least wind of the world will blow them down. <laughs> Lepidus is high-colored. <laughs> they have made him drink alms drink. <laughs> As they pinched one another by the disposition, he cries out, no more, reconciles them to his entreaty and himself to the drink. <laughs> <laughs> but it raises the greater war between him and his discretion. <laughs> Why, this... It is to have a name and in great men's fellowship. I had as live a reed that will do me no service as a partisan. I could not heave. <laughs> to be called into a huge sphere and not be seen to move in it are the holes where eyes should be, uh, which pitifully disaster the checks, cheeks. <laughs> yeah. Thus do they, sir. They take the flow of the Nile by certain scales of the pyramid. They know by the height, the lowness, or the mean, if dearth or foison follow. The higher Nilus swells, the more it promises. As it ebbs, the seedsman upon the slime and ooze scatters his grain, and shortly comes to harvest. You have strange serpents there. I, Lepidus. Your serpent of Egypt is bred now of your mind by the operation of your son. So is your crocodile. Mm, they are so. Cheat and some wine. A health to Lepidus. I'm not so well as I should be, but I'll ne'er out. <laughs> not till you have slept. I fear me you'll be in till then. Nay, certainly. I've heard that Ptolemy's paramises are very goodly things. Without contradiction, I've heard that. Pompey, a word. Uh, Say in mine ear, what is it? Forsake thy seat, I do beseech thee, uh, Captain, and hear me speak a word. Uh, forbear, me, forbear me till and on. Uh, this wine is for Lepidus. What manner of thing is your crocodile? Well, it is shaped, sir, like itself. And it is as broad as it hath breadth. It is just so high as it is and moves with its own organs. It lives by that which nourisheth it. And the elements, once out of it, it transmigrates. What color is it all? Oh, with its own color, too. <laughs> it's a strange serpent. Tis so. Oh, and the tears of it <clears throat> are wet. Will this description satisfy him? With the health that Poppy gives him, else he's a very he's a very epicure. So Poppy, 
Let's talk over here. Go, go hang, sir. Tell me what? Away, do as I bid you. Well, where is this cup I called for? If for the sake of merit thou wilt hear me, rise from thy stool. I think thou art mad. The matter. I have ever held my cup off to thy fortunes. Thou hast served me with much faith. What's else to say? Be jolly, lords. These uh, quicksands, Lepidus, keep off them, for you sink. Wilt thou be lord of all the world? Sayest thou? Wilt thou be lord of the whole world? That's twice. How should that be? But entertain it. And though thou think me poor, I am the man will give thee all the world. Hast thou drunk well? <laughs> no, Pompey. I have kept me from the cup. Thou art, if thou darest be, the earthly Jove. Whatever the ocean pales or sky eclipse is thine, if thou wilt have it. Show me which way. These three world shares, these competitors are in thy vessel. Let me cut the cable. And when we are put off, fall to their throats. All there is thine. This thou shouldst have done and not have spoken on it. In me, tis villainy in thee had been good service. Thou must know, tis not by profit that does lean, lead my honor, mine honor it. Repent that thou ever thy tongue hath so betrayed thine act. Being done unknown, I should have found it afterwards well done, but must condemn it now, desist and drink. This will never follow thy pallid fortunes more, who seeks and will not take when once tis offered, shall never find it more. This health to Lepidus. Uh, uh, oh, bear him ashore. I'll pledge it for him, Pompey. Here's to thee, Minas. In a barbus, welcome. Fill till the cup be hid. <laughs> There's a strong fellow, Minas. Why? There's the third part of the world, man. Seest not? Third part is then drunk. Would it were all that it might go on wheels. <laughs> Drink thou, increase the reels. Come. This is not yet an Alexandrian feast. So it ripens towards it. <laughs> Strike the vessels, ho! Here's to Caesar! <laughs> <laughs> I could well forbear it. Ah, tis monstrous labor when I my brain in it grow fouler. Uh, be a child of the time. <laughs> Such an old make answer. But I had rather fast from all four days than drink so much in one. <laughs> my brave emperor, shall we dance now the Egyptian bacchanals and celebrate our drink? Let's have it, good soldier. Come. Come, let's all take hands till that the conquering wine hath steeped our sense in <laughs> soft and delicate leaf. <laughs> all take hands, make battery to our ears with the loud music. The while I'll place you, then the boy shall sing. The holding every man shall bear as loud as his strong sides can volley. <laughs> <laughs> Hum the monarch of the vine, plumpy Bacchus with pink eye, in thy fats our cares be drowned, with thy grapes our hairs be crowned, cup us till the world go round, cup us till the world go round. Mm. <laughs> what will you more? Pompey, good night. Good brother, let me request you off. Ah, oh, graver business frowns at this levity. Mm. Gentle lords, let's part. You see, we have 
burnt our cheeks. Strong in the barb is weaker than the wine and mine. Are Tongue splits what it speaks. Hurts. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> Good night. Good night, Anthony. Your hand. I'll try you on the shore. And shall, sir. Give us your hand. <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> you have my father's house. But what? We are friends. Come down into the boat. <laughs> oh, she kid you fall not. <laughs> Minus, I'll not on shore. No, to my cabin. These drums, these trumpets, flutes, what? Like Neptune here, we hear bid a loud farewell to these great fellows. Sound and be hanged, sound out. Who says, uh, oh, there's my cap. Oh, noble captain, come. Now, darting Parthia, art thou struck, and now pleased fortune does of Marcus Crassus' death make me revenger. Bear the king's son's body before our army. Thy Pacorus Orides plays for this, Marcus Crassus. Noble Ventidius, whilst yet with Parthian blood thy sword is warm, the fugitive Parthians follow. Spur through Media, Mesopotamia, and the shelters whither the routed fly, so thy grand captain, Antony, shall set thee on triumphant chariots and put garlands on thy head. Thou silly as silly as I have done enough. A lower place, note well, may make too great an act. For learn this, silly as, better to leave undone than by our deed acquire too high a fame when we when him we serves away. Caesar and Antony have ever won more in their officer than person. Socius, one of my place in Syria, his lieutenant, for quick accumulation of renown, which he achieved by the minute, lost his favor. Who does in the wars more than his captain can becomes his captain's captain, and ambition, uh, the soldier's virtue, rather makes choice of loss than gain which darkens him. I could do more, good old, I could do more to do Antonius good, but t'would offend him, and in his offense should make my performance perish. Thou hast, Ventidius, that without the which a soldier in his sword grants scarce distinction. Thou wilt write to Antony, I'll humbly signify what in his name that magical word of war we have effected. How with his banners and his well-played ranks, the ne'er-beaten horse of Parthia we shall have jaded out of the field. Where is he now? He purposes to Athens, whither with what haste the weight we must convey with all will permit. We shall appear before him. On there, pass along. What, are the brothers parted? They have dispatched with Pompey, he is gone. The other three are sealing. Octavia weeps to part from Rome. Caesar is sad and Lepidus, since Pompey's feast, as Minus says, is troubled with the green sickness. Tis a noble Lepidus. A very fine one. Oh, how he loves Caesar. Nay, but how dearly he adores Mark Antony. Mm, Caesar? Why, he's the Jupiter of men. What's Antony, the god of Jupiter? Spake you of Caesar, how the nonpareil? Ah, uh, Antony, ah, thou Arabian bird. Would you praise Caesar, say, Caesar, go no further. Indeed, he plied them both with excellent praises. But he loves Caesar best, yet he loves Antony. Who hearts, tongues, figures, scribes, bards, poets, cannot think, speak, cast, write, sing, number, who? His love to Antony. But as for Caesar, kneel down, kneel down, and wonder. Both he loves. They are his shards, and he their beetles so. 
This is to horse. Adieu, noble Agrippa. Good fortune, worthy soldier, and farewell. Uh, no further, sir. You take from me a great part of myself. Use me well to end. Sister, prove such a wife as my thoughts make thee, and as my farthest band shall pass on thy approve. Most noble Antony, let not the peace of virtue which is set betwixt us has the sentiment of our love to keep it builded, be the ram to batter the fortress of it. For better might we have loved without this mean, if on both parts this be not cherished. Make me not offended in your distrust. I said. You shall not find, though you be there in curious, the least cause for what you seem to fear. So the gods keep you, and make the hearts of Romans serve your ends. For here, for we'll, we will here part. Farewell, my dear sister, fare thee well. The elements be kind to thee, and make thy spirits all of comfort. Fare thee well. My noble brother. April's in her eyes, it is love's spring, and these the showers to bring it on. Be cheerful. Sir, look well to my husband's house, and... <sighs> what, Octavia? I'll tell you in your ear. Her tongue will not obey her heart, nor can her heart inform her tongue. The swan's downed feather that stands upon the swell at the full of tide, and neither way inclines. Will Caesar weep? He has a cloud in his face. He were the worse for that, were he a horse. So is he being a man. <laughs> Why, you know, Barbus, when Antony found Julius Caesar dead, he cried almost to roaring, and he wept when at Philippi he found Brutus slain. That year, indeed, he was troubled with the room. What willingly he did confound, he wailed. Believe it, till I weep too. No, sweet Octavia, you shall hear from me still. The time shall not outgo my thinking on you. Come, sir, come. I'll wrestle with you in my strength of love. Look, here I have you. Thus, I let you go and give you to the gods. Adieu. Be happy. Let all the numbers of the stars give light to thy fair way. Farewell. 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 Oh, where is the fellow? Half a fear to come. Go to, go to. Come hither, sir. Good majesty. King Herod of Judea dare not look upon you, but when you are well pleased. That Herod's head I'll have. But how, when Antony is gone, through whom I might command it? Come thou near. Most gracious majesty. Didst thou behold Octavia? I dread queen. Where? Madam, in Rome. I looked her in the face and saw her led between her brother and Mark Antony. Is she as tall as me? Oh, she, she is not, madam. Didst hear her speak? Is she shrill-tongued or low? Madam, I heard her speak. She is low-voiced. Oh, that's not so good. He cannot like her long. Like her? Oh, Isis, tis impossible. I think so, Charmian. Dull of tongue and dwarfish. <laughs> what majesty is in her gate? Remember, if e'er thou look'st on majesty. Oh, she creeps. Her motion and her station are as one. She shows a body rather than a life, a statue than a breather. Is this certain? 
four, I have no observance. Hmm. Three in Egypt cannot be make better note. He's, he, he's very knowing, I do perceive it. There's nothing in her yet. The fellow has good judgment. Excellent. Guess at her years, I prithee. Well, madam, she was a widow. Widow? <gasps> Shani Ann, hark. And I do think she's 30. Uh. Miss thou her face in mind? I is it long or round? Round, even to faultiness. For the most part, too. They are foolish that are so. Her hair, what color? Oh, brown, brown, madam. And her forehead, as low as she would wish it. Mm. There's gold for thee. Thou must not take my former sharpness ill. I will employ thee back again. I find thee most fit for business. Go make thee ready. Our letters are prepared. Hmm? A proper man. Indeed he is so. I repent me much that so I harried him. Why me thinks by him, this creature's no such thing. <gasps> Nothing, madam. A man hath seen some majesty and should know. Hath he seen majesty? Isis else defend, and, and serving you so long. <laughs> I have one thing more to ask him yet, good Charmian, but tis no matter. Thou shalt bring him to me where I write. All may be well enough. I warrant you, madam. <laughs> Nay, nay, Octavian, not only that, that were excusable that, and thousands more of semblable import, but he hath waged new wars against Pompey, made his will and read it to public ear, spoke scantly of me when perforce he could not but pay me terms of honor, cold and sickly he vented the most narrow measure lent me. When the best hint was given him, he, he not took, or did, did it from his teeth. Good, my lord, believe not all, or if you must believe, stomach not all. A more unhappy lady, if this division chance ne'er stood between, praying for both parts. The good gods will mock me presently when I shall play, pray, oh, bless my lord and husband. Undo that prayer by crying out as loud, oh, bless my brother. Husband win, win, brother, prays and destroys the prayer, no midway twixt these extremes at all. Gentle Octavia, let your best love draw to that point which seeks best to preserve it. If I lose mine honor, I lose myself. Better I were not yours than yours so branchless. But as you requested, yourself shall go between us. The meantime, lady, I'll raise the preparation of a war shall stain your brother. Make your soonest haste, so your desires are yours. Thanks to my lord. The Jove of power make me most weak. Most weak, your reconciler. Wars twixt you twain would be as if the world should cleave and that slain men should solder up the rift. When it appears to you where this begins, turn your displeasure that way, for our faults can never be so equal that your love can equally move with them. Provide your going, choose your own company, and command what cost your heart has mind to. How oh, now, friend Eros? Well, there's strange news come, sir. What, man? Caesar and Lepidus have made wars upon Pompey. Oh, that is old. What is the success? Caesar, having made use of him in the wars against Pompey, presently denied him reviolty, would not let him partake in the glory of the action, and not resting here, accuses him of letters he had formerly wrote to Pompey. Upon his own appeal, seizes him. So the poor third is up till death enlarge his confine. Then, world, thou hast a pair of chaps no more, and throw between them all the food thou hast. They'll grind the one the other. Where's Antony? He's walking in the garden, thus, and spurns the rush that lies before him, cries, fool, Lepidus, and threats the throat of that his officer that murdered Pompey. Our great navy's rigged for Italy and Caesar. 
more Domitius, my lord desires you presently. My news I might have told hereafter. Twill be not, but let it be. Bring me to Antony. Come, sir. Contemning Rome, he has done all this and more in Alexandria. Here's the, ma here's the manner up in the marketplace. On a tribunal, silver Cleopatra and himself in chairs of gold were publicly enthroned. At the feet sat Caesarion, whom they call my father's son, and all the unlawful issues that their law since then hath made between them. Unto her he gave the establishment of Egypt, made her of lower Syria, Cyprus, Lydia, absolute queen. This in the public eye? The common show place where they exercise his sons, he there proclaimed the kings of kings, great media, Parthia and Armenia. He gave to Alexander, to Ptolemy. He assigned Syria, Cilicia, uh, Phoenicia. She, in the uh, abilements of the goddess Isis, that day appeared and oft before gave audience, as tis reported so. Well, let Rome be thus informed. Who, queasy with his insolence already, will their good thoughts call from him? people knows it and have now received his accusations who does he accuse caesar and that having in sicily sextus pompeius spoiled we had not raided him his part of the isle then does he say he lent me some shipping unrestored lastly he frets that lepidus of the triumvirate should be deposed and being that we detain all his revenue sir this should be answered it is done already and the messenger gone. I have told him Leptis was grown too cruel, that he his high authority abused and did deserve his change. For what I have conquered, I grant him part. But then in his Armenia and other of his conquered kingdoms, I demand the like. You'll never yield to that. Mm. Nor must not then be yielded to in this. Hail, Caesar, and my lord, hail, most dear Caesar. That ever I should call thee castaway. Oh, you have not called me so, nor have you cause. Why have you stolen upon us thus? You come not like Caesar's sister, the wife of Antony, should have an army for an usher, and the knees of horses to tell of her approach. Long years she did appear. The trees be the way should have borne men, and expectation fainted, longing for what it had not. Nay, the dust should have ascended to the roof of heaven, raised by your bubbleless troops. But you are come, a market made to Rome, and have prevented the ostentation of our love, which left unshown is often left unloved. I should have met you by sea and land, supplying every stage with an augmented greeting. Good, my lord. To come thus was I not constrained, but did it of my free will. My lord, Mark Antony, hearing that you prepared for war, acquainted my grieved car with all, whereon I begged his pardon for return. Which soon he granted, being an abstract tween his lust and him. Oh, do not say so, my lord. I have eyes upon him. And his affairs come to me on the wind. Where is he now? My lord, in, in Athens. Mm -hmm. No, my most wronged sister. Cleopatra had nodded him to her. He had given his empire up to a whore who now are levying the kings of the earth for war. He hath assembled Bacchus, the king of Libya, Archelaus of Cappadocia, Philadelphus, king of Paphlagonia, the, the Thracian king, Adalus, king Mancus of Arabia, king of Pont, Herod of Judea, Mithridates, a king of, of Comagena, Polemon and Amintus, the kings of Mede and Lysenia, with a more larger list of scepters. Uh I, me, most wretched, that have my heart parted betwixt two friends that does afflict each other. Mm. Welcome hither. Your letters did withhold our breaking forth till we perceived both how you were wrong led and we in negligent danger. Cheer your heart. Be you not troubled with the time which drives away your content, these strong necessities, but let determine things to destiny. Hold 
on bewailed their way. Welcome to Rome. Nothing more dear to me. You are abused beyond the mark of thought and the high gods to do you justice makes his ministers of us and those that love you best of comfort and ever welcome to us. Welcome lady. Welcome dear madam. Each heart in Rome does love and pity you. Only the adulterous Anthony most large in his abominations turns you off and gives his potent regiment to a troll that noises it, noises it against us. Is it so, sir? Most certain. Sister, welcome. Pray you be ever known to patient. My dearest sister. I will be even with thee, doubt it not. But why? 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 Thou hast forespoke my being in these wars, and sayest it is not fit. Well, is it? Is it? If not denounced against us, why should we not be there in person? Well, I could reply, if we should serve with horse and mares together, the horse were merely lost. The mares would bear a soldier and his horse. What is it you say? Your presence needs must puzzle Antony. Take from his heart, take from his brain, from his time. What should not then be spared? He is already traduced for levity, and to said in Rome that Photinus, a eunuch, and your maids manage this war. Think Rome and their tongues not that speak against us. A charge we bear in the war, and as the president of my kingdom will appear therefore a man. Speak not against it, I will not stay behind. Nay, I have done. Here comes the emperor. Is it not strange, Canidius, that from Tarentum and Brundusium he could so quickly cut the Ionian Sea and take in Torin? You have heard on, sweet. Ah, sir, he is never more admired than by the negligent. Oh, good rebuke, which might have well become the best of men to taunt its slackness. Canidius, we will fight with him by sea. By sea? What else? Uh, why will my lord do so? For that he dares us to it. So hath my lord dared him to single fight. Aye, and to wage his battle at Pharsalia, where Caesar fought with Pompey. But these offers which serve for, not for his vantage, he shakes off, and so should you. Your ships are not well manned. Your mariners are muleteers, reapers, people engrossed by swift impress. In Caesar's fleet are those that often have against Pompey fought. Their ships are yaw, yours heavy. No disgrace shall fall you for refusing him at sea, being prepared for land. By sea, by sea. Most worthy sir, you therein throw away the absolute soldiership you have by land. Distract your army, which doth most consist of war-marked footmen. Leave unexecuted your own renowned knowledge. Quite forgo the way which promises assurance and give up yourself merely to chance and hazard from firm security. I'll fight at sea. I have 60 sails. Caesar, none better. Our overplus of shipping we will burn and with the rest full man from the head of Actium beat the approaching Caesar. But if we fail, we can then do it at land. My business. The news is true, my lord. He is described. Caesar has taken Torine. Can he be there in person? It is impossible. Strange that his power should be. Canidius, our 19 legions thou shalt hold by land and our 12,000 horse will to our ship. Away, my Thetis. How now? Worthy soldier. Noble emperor, do not fight by sea. Trust not to rotten planks. Do you misdoubt this, this sword and my wounds? Let the Egyptians and the Phoenicians go a-ducking. We have us conquered standing on the earth, fighting foot to foot. Well, well, away. 
by Hercules, I think I am in the right. Soldier, thou art. But his whole action grows not in the power on it. So our leaders led, and we are women's men. You keep by land, the legions and the horse whole, do you not? Marcus Octavius, Marcus Justinius, Publicola, and Kellius are for sea, but we keep whole by land. The speed of Caesar's carries beyond belief. While he was yet in Rome, his power went out in such distractions as beguiled all spies. Who is his lieutenant, hear you? They say one Taurus. Well, I know the man. The emperor calls Candidius. With news the times with labor and throws forth each minute some. Taurus? My lord. Strike not by land, keep whole, provoke not battle till we have done at sea. Do not exceed the prescript of this scroll, our fortune lies upon this jump. That we are squadrons on yon side of hill, in eye of Caesar's battle, from which place we may number the we may the number of ships behold, and so proceed accordingly. Not not all oh, not. I can behold no longer the Antoniad, the Egyptian admiral, with all their sixty fly and turn the rudder. To see it, mine eyes are blasted. Uh, gods and goddesses, uh, all the whole synod of them. What's thy passion? The, the, the greater ca ca cantle of the world is lost with very ignorance. We have kissed away kingdoms and provinces. How appears the fight? On our side, like the token pestilence, or death is sure, the yon ribald nag of Egypt whom leprosy o'ertake in the midst of all of the fight. When vintage, vantage, like a pair of twins appeared, both at the same, or rather ours, the elder, the breeze upon her like a cow in tune, hoist sails and flies. That I beheld, mine eyes did sicken at the sight and I could not endure a further view. She once being aloof to the, the noble ruin of her magic, Antony claps on his sea wing and like a doting mallard leaving the fight in height flies after her. I never saw an action of such shame. Experience, manhood, honor, ne'er before did violate so itself. Alack, alack. Our fortune on the sea is out of breath and sinks most lamentably. Had our general been with what he knew himself, it had gone well. Oh, he has given example for our flight, most grossly by his own. I are you thereabouts? Why then, good night indeed. Toward Peloponnesus are they fled. Tis easy to it, and there I will attend. What further comes? To Caesar will I render my legions and my horse. Six kings already show me the way of yielding. I'll yet follow the wounded chance of Antony. Though my reason sits in the wind against me. Hark, the land bids me tread no more upon it. It is a shame to bear me. Friends, come hither. It's so late in the world that I have lost my way forever. I have a ship laden with gold. Take that, divide it, fly, and make your peace with Caesar. Fly, not we. I have fled myself and have instructed cowards to run and show their shoulders. Friends, be gone. I have myself resolved upon a course which has no need of you. Be gone. My treasure's in the harbor. Take it. I followed that. I blush to look upon. My very hairs do mutiny, for the white will prove the brown for rashness, and they them for fear and doting. Friends, be gone. You shall have letters from me to some friends that will sweep your way for you. Pray you, look not sad, nor make replies of loathness. Take the hint which my despair proclaims. Let that be left which leaves itself to the seaside straightway. I will possess you of that ship and treasure. Leave me, I pray, a little for you now. Nay, 
do so, for I indeed have lost command. Therefore, I pray you, I'll see you by and by. Nay, gentle madam, to him, comfort him. Do, most dear queen. Do? Why, what else? Let me sit down. Oh, no, 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 no! Be you here, sir? Fie, fie, fie! Madam. Madam, oh good empress. Sir, sir. Yes, yes, my lord, yes. He and Philippi kept his sword in like a dancer while I struck the lean and wrinkled Cassius. And twas I that the mad Brutus ended. He alone dealt on a lieutenantry and no practice had in the brave squares for war. Yet now, oh, no matter. I'll stand by. The queen, my lord, the queen. Go to him, madam, speak to him. Is unqualited with very shame. Well then, sustain me. Oh. Most noble sir, arise. The queen approaches. Her head's declined, and death will seize her, but your comfort makes the rescue. Oh, I have offended reputation. A most unnoble swerving. Sir, the queen. Oh, whither hast thou led me, Egypt? See how I convey my shame out of thine eyes by looking back what I have left behind, destroyed in dishonor. My lord, my lord, forgive my fearful sails. I little thought you would have followed. Egypt, thou knewst too well my heart was to thy rudder tied by the strings, and thou shouldst tow me after. Or my spirit, thy full supremacy, thou knewest, and that thy beck might from the bidding of the gods command me. Oh, my pardon. Now I must to the young man and send humble treaties, dodge and palter in the shifts of lowness, who with half the bulk of the world played as I pleased, making and borrowed fortunes. You did know how much you were my conqueror, and that my sword, made weak by my affliction, would obey it on all cause. Pardon. Pardon. Fall not a tear, I say. Not one of them rates all that is won and lost. Give me a kiss. Even this repays me. We sent our schoolmaster. Is it come back? For love, I am full of lead. Some wine within there and our vines. Fortune knows we scorn her most when most she offers blows. Let him appear that's come from Anthony. Know you him? Caesar, tis his schoolmaster, an argument that he has plucked when hither he sends so poor opinion of his wing, which had superfluous kings for messengers, and not many moons gone by. Approach and speak. Such as I am, I come from Antony. I was of late as petty to his ends, as to the morn dew of the myrtle leaf to his grand sea. Be it so. Declare thine office. Lord of his fortunes, he salutes thee and requires to live in Egypt, which not granted, he lessens his request and to these sues to let him Breathe between the heavens and earth, a private man in Athens. This for him. Next, Cleopatra does confess thy greatness, submits her to thy might, and of thee craves the circle of the Ptolemies for her heirs, now hazarded to thy grace. For Antony... I have no ears to his request. The queen of audience nor desire shall fail. So she from Egypt drive her all disgraced friend or take his life there. This, if she perform, she shall not sue unheard. So to them both. Fortune pursue thee. Bring them through the bands. To try thy eloquence, now tis time. Dispatch from Antony when Cleopatra promise, and in our name what she requires at more from thine invention offers. Women are not in their best fortune strong, but want will perjure the near touched vestal. Try thy cunning, Thedius, make thine own edict for thy pains, which we will answer as a law. Caesar, I go. 
Observe how Anthony becomes his flaw and what thou thinkst his very action speaks in every power that moves. Caesar, I shall. What shall we do, Anubarvis? Think and die. Santony or we in fault for this? Antony only, that would make his will lord of his reason. What though you fled from that great face of war, whose several ranges frighted each other, why should he follow? The itch of his affection, should not them have nicked his captainship? At such point, when half the world's opposed, he being the mere question, Twas a shame no less than was his loss, to course your flying flags and leave his navy gazing. Really peace. Is that his answer? Queen shall then have courtesy, so she will yield us all up. Let her know it. To the boy Caesar, send this grizzled head, and he will fill thy wishes to the brim with principalities. That head, my lord. To him again, tell him he wears the rose of youth upon him, from which the world should know something particular. His coin, ships, legions, maybe a coward's whose ministers should, would prevail under the service of a child as soon as the command of Caesar. I dare him, therefore, to lay his gay comparisons apart and answer me, declined, sword against sword, ourselves alone. I'll write it. Follow me. Yes, like enough, high-battled Caesar will unstate his happiness and be staged to the show against a sworder. I see men's judgments are a parcel of their fortunes, and things outward do draw the inward quality after them, to suffer all alike. That he should dream, knowing all measures, the full Caesar will empty answer his emptiness. Caesar, thou hast subdued his judgment too. A messenger from Caesar. What? No more ceremony? See, my women, against the blown rose, may they stop their nose that kneel unto the buds. Admit him, sir. Mine honesty and I begin to square. The loyalty well held to fools does make our faith mere folly. Yet he that can endure to follow with allegiance of fallen lord does conquer him that does his master conquer and earns a place in the story. Caesar's will. Hear it apart. None but friends, say boldly. So haply are they friends to Antony. He needs as many, sir, as Caesar has, or needs not us. If Caesar please, our master will leave to be his friend. For us, you know, whose he is, we are, and that is Caesar's. So, thus then, thou most renowned, Caesar entreats not to consider in what case thou stands further than he is Caesar. Go on, right royal. He knows that you embrace not Antony, as you did love, but as you feared him. Oh. The scars upon your honor, therefore, he does pity as constrained blemishes, not as deserved. He is a God and knows what is most right. My honor was not yielded, but conquered merely. To be sure of that, I shall ask Antony. Sir, sir, thou art so leaky that we must leave thee to thy sinking, or thy dearest quit thee. Shall I say to Caesar what you require of him? For he partly begs to be desired to give. It much would please him that of his fortunes you should make a staff to lean upon, but it would warm his spirits to hear from me you had left Antony and put yourself under his shroud, the universal landlord. What's your name? My name is Thidius. Hmm. Most kind messenger, say to great Caesar this in deputation, I kiss his conquering hand. 
Tell him I am prompt to lay my crown at feet and there to kneel. Tell him from his all obeying breath, I hear the doom of Egypt. Tis your noblest course. Wisdom and fortune combating together, if that the former dare but what it can, no chance may shake it. Give me grace to lay my duty on your hand. Your Caesar's father oft, when he half must of taking kingdoms in, misdoubt his lips upon that unworthy place as it rained kisses. Favors? By Jove the thunders, what art thou, fellow? One that but performs the bidding of the fullest man and worthiest to have command obeyed. You will be whipped. Approach there. Ah, oh, you kite. Now gods and devils authority melts from me. Of late when I cried, ho, like boys unto a muss, kings would start forth and cry, your will, have you no ears? I am Antony yet. Take hence this jack and whip him. Tis better playing with a lion's whelp than with an old one dying. Moon and stars, whip him. Were twenty of the greatest tributaries that do acknowledge Caesar, should I find them so saucy with the hand of she here, what's her name, since she was Cleopatra? Whip him, fellows, till like a boy you see him cringe his face and whine aloud for mercy. Take him Mark next. Antony! Tug him away! Being whipped, bring him back again. The jack of Caesar shall bear us an errant to him. You were half blasted ere I knew you, huh? Have I my pillow left unpressed in Rome, forborne the getting of a lawful race, and by a gem of women to be abused by one that looks on feeders? My lord. You have been a boggler ever. But when we were, but when we in our viciousness grow hard, oh, misery on it, the wise gods seal our eyes, in our own filth drop our clear judgments, make us adore our errors, laugh at while we strut to our confusion. Oh, is it come to this? I found you as a morsel, cold upon dead Caesar's trencher. Nay, you were a fragment of Nias Pompey's. Besides what hotter hours, unregistered and vulgar fame, you have luxuriously picked out. For I am sure, though you can guess what temperance should be, you know not what it is. Wherefore is this? To let a fellow that will take rewards and say, God quit you, be familiar with my playfellow, your hand, this kingly seal and plighter of high hearts. Oh, that I were upon the hill of Bassan to outroar the horned herd, for I have savage cause, and to proclaim it civilly were like a haltered neck which does the hangman thank for being yar about him. Is he whipped? Sound he, sir. Oh, cried he, and begged a pardon. He did ask favor. That thy father live, let him repent. Thou wast not made his daughter, and be thou sorry to follow Caesar in his triumph, since thou hast been whipped for following him. Henceforth, the white hand of a lady fever thee. Shake thou to look on't. Get thee back to Caesar. Tell him thy entertainment. Look thou, say he makes me angry with him. Or he seems proud and disdainful, harping on what I am, not what he knew I was. He makes me angry. And at this time, most easy tis to do it, when my good stars that were my former guides have empty left their orbs and shot their fires into the abysm of hell. If he mislike my speech and what is done, tell him he has Hipparchus, thy enfranched bondman, whom he may at pleasure whip or hang or torture, as he shall like to quit me. Urge it thou, hence with thy stripes, and be gone. Have you done yet? Oh, lack, our terrene moon is now eclipsed, and it portends alone the fall of Antony. I must stay his time. So, to flatter Caesar, would you mingle eyes with one that ties his points? Not know me yet. Cold-hearted towards me? Ah, oh, dear, if I be so from my cold heart, let heaven endanger, engender hail and poison it in the source and the first stone drop in my neck. As it determines so to solve my life, the next Caesarian smite till by degrees the memory of my womb together with my brave Egyptians all by the discandying of this pelleted storm lie graveless till the flies and gnats of Nile have buried them for prey. 
I am satisfied. <sighs> Caesar sets down in Alexandria where I will oppose his fate. Our force by land hath nobly held. Our severed navy too have knit again and fleet threatening most sea-like. Where hast thou been, my heart? Hast thou here, lady? If from the field I shall return once more to kiss these lips, I will appear in blood, and I and my sword will earn our chronicle. There's no bent yet. It's my brave lord. I will be treble sinewed, hearted breeds, and fight maliciously. For when mine hours were nice and lucky, men did ransom lives of me for jests. But now I'll set my teeth and send to darkness all that stopped me. Come, let's have one other gaudy night. Call to me all my sad captains. Fill our bowls once more. Let's mock the midnight bell. It is my birthday. I had thought to have held it poor, but since my Lord has answered me again, I, I, I will be Cleopatra. We will yet do well. Call all his noble captains to my Lord. Do so. We'll speak to them, and tonight I'll force the wine peep through their scars. Come on, my queen. They're sappened yet. The next time I do fight, I'll make death love me, or I will contend even with his pestilent side. Now he'll outstare the lightning. To be furious is to be frighted out of fear. And in that mood, the dove will peck the ostrich and see still a diminution in our captain's brain restores his heart. When valor preys on reason, it eats the sword it fights with. I will seek some way to leave him. <laughs> he calls me a boy and chides as he had power to beat me out of Egypt. My messenger he hath whipped with rods dares me to personal combat, Caesar to Anthony. Let the old ruffian know. I have many other ways to die. Meantime, Laugh at his challenge. Caesar must think when one so great begins to rage, he's hunted even to falling. Give him no breath, but now make boot of his distraction. Never anger. Make good guard for itself. Hmm. Let our best heads know that tomorrow, the last of many battles we mean to fight. Within our files, there are of those that served Mark Antony, but late enough to fetch him in. See it done and feast the army. We have stored to do it and have earned the waste. Poor Antony. He will not fight with me, Domitius. No. Why should he not? He thinks. And being 20 times of better fortune, he is 20 men to one. Tomorrow, soldier by sea and land, I'll fight, or I will live or bathe my dying honor in the blood shall make it live again. Would thou fight well? I'll strike and cry, take all. <laughs> well said, come on. Call forth my household servants. Let's tonight be bounteous as our meal. Give me thy hand. Thou hast been rightly honest, so hast thou. Thou and thou and thou, you have served me well, and kings have been your fellows. Means this? Tis one of those odd tricks which sorrow shoots out of the mind. And thou art honest too. I wish I could be made so many men, and all of you clapped up together in an Antony that I might do you service so good as you have done. The gods forbid. Oh, well, my good fellow. Wait on me tonight. Scant not my cups and make as much of me as when mine empire was your fellow too and suffered my command. What does he mean? To make his followers weep? Tend me tonight. Maybe it is the period of your duty. Haply you shall not see me more, or if a mangled shadow. Perchance tomorrow you'll serve another master. I look on you as one that takes his leave. Mine honest friends, 
I turn you not away, but like a master married to your good service, stay till death. Tend me tonight, two hours, I ask no more, and the gods yield you for it. What means you, sir, to give them this discomfort? Look, they weep, and I, an ass, am onion-eyed. For shame, transform us not to women. <laughs> now the witch take me if I meant it thus. Grace grow from where those drops fall, my hearty friends. You take me in too dolorous a sense, for I speak to you for your comfort. I did desire you to burn this night with torches. No, my heart, I hope well of tomorrow and will lead you where rather I'll expect victorious life than death and honor. Let's to supper, come, drown consideration. Brother, good night, tomorrow is the day. It will determine one way, fare you well. Heard you have nothing strange about the streets? Nothing. What news? But like, tis but a rumor. Uh, good night to you. Well, sir, good night. Soldiers, have careful watch. And you, good night. Good night. Here we. And if tomorrow our navy thrive, I have an absolute hope our landmen will stand up. Tis a brave army and full of purpose. Peace, what noise? List, list. Hark. Music in the air. Under the earth. Signs well, does it not? No. Peace, I say. What should this mean? It's the god Hercules, whom Antony loved, now leaves him. Walk. Let's see if other watchmen do hear what we do. How now, masters? How now? How now? I, is it not strange? Do you hear, masters? Do you hear? All the noise so far as we have quarter. Let's see how it will give off. Content, tis strange. Eros, thine armor, Eros. Sleep a little. No, my Chuck. Eros, come, mine armor, Eros. Come, good fellow, put thine iron on. If fortune be not ours today, it is because we brave her. Come. Nay, I'll help too. Uh, what, what is this for? Oh, let be, let be. Thou art the armor of my heart. False, false, this, this. Sooth, <laughs> I'll help. Mm. Thus it must be. Well, well, we shall thrive now. Seest thou, my good fellow, go, put on thy defenses. Briefly, sir. Is not this buckled well? Mm, rarely, rarely. He that unbuckles this till we do please to mm. daft for our repose shall hear a storm. Thou fumblest, Eros, and my queen's esquire more tight than this than thou. Dispatch! No oh, love, if thou could see my wars today and use the ro royal occupation, thou should see a workman in't. Ah, good morrow to thee. Welcome. Thou looks like him that knows a warlike charge. To business that we love, we rise betime and go to it with delight. Housen, oh, sir, early though it be, have on their riveted trim and at the port expect you. Mm. The morn is fair. Good morrow, General. Good morrow, General. Tis well blown, lads. This morning, like the spirit of a youth that means to be of note, begins betimes. So, so, come, give me that way. This way, well said. Fare thee well, dame. Whatever becomes of me, this is a soldier's kiss, rebukable and Worthy, shameful check it were to stand on more mechanic compliment. I'll leave thee now like a man of steel. You that will fight, follow me close. I'll bring you to it. Adieu. Please you retire to your chamber. Wait me. He goes forth gallantly that he and Caesar might determine this great war in single fight. Then, Antony, but now, well on. Ah, 
The gods make this a happy day to Antony. Would thou and those thy scars had once prevailed to make me fight at land. Hadst thou done so, the kings that have revolted and the soldier that has this morning left thee would have still followed thy heels. Who's gone this morning? Who? One ever near thee. Call for Enobarbus. He shall not hear thee. Or from Caesar's camp say, I am none of thine. What, says, what sayest thou? Sir, he, he is with Caesar. Sir, his chests and treasure he has not with him. Is he gone? Most certain. Go, Eros, send his treasure after. Do it. D detain no jot, I charge thee. Write to him, I will subscribe gentle adieus and greetings. Say that I wish he never find more cause to change a master. My fortunes have corrupted honest men. Dispatch. In a barbus. Go forth, Agrippa, and begin the fight. Our will is Antony be took alive. Make it so known. Caesar, I shall. The time of universal peace is near. Prove this a prosperous day. The Thenoct world shall bear the olive freely. Antony is coming to the field. Go charge Agrippa. Plant those that have revolted in the vant that Antony may seem to spend his fury upon himself. Alexis did revolt and went to Judea on affairs of Antony. There did dissuade great Herod to incline himself to Caesar and leave his master Antony. For this pain Caesar hath hanged him. Canidius and the rest that fell away have entertainment, but no honorable trust. I have done ill, of which I do accuse myself so sorely that I will joy no more. You know, Barbus, Antony hath after thee sent all thy treasure with his bounty over plus. The messenger came on my guard and at thy tent is now unloading of his mules. I give it you. Mock not, Eno Barbus, I tell you true. Best you safe the bringer out of the host. I must attend mine office or would have done it myself. Your emperor continues still a Jove. I am the villain of the earth, and I feel I am so most. Oh, Antony, thou oh, mine of bounty, how wouldst thou have paid my better service when my turpitude that does so crown with gold? This blows my heart. If swift thought break it not, a swifter mean shall overtake thought. But thought will do it, I feel. I fight against thee? No. I will go seek some ditch wherein to die. The foulest best fits my latter part of life. Retire. We have engaged ourselves too far. Caesar himself has work and our oppression exceeds what we expected. Oh, my brave emperor, this is fought indeed. Uh, had we done so at first, we had driven them home with clouts about their heads. Thou bleeds to pace. I had a wound here that was like a T, but now it is made an H. They do retire. We'll beat them. We'll beat them into the bench holes. I have yet room for six scotches more. <laughs> they are beaten, sir, and our advantage serves for a fair victory. Let us score their backs and snatch them up as we take hairs behind to sport to maul a runner. I will reward thee once for thy sprightly comfort and tenfold for thy good valor. Come thee on. I'll halt after. We 
we've beat him to this camp. Run one before and let the queen know of our guests. Tomorrow before the sun shall see us, we'll spill the blood that has today escaped. I thank you all. Don't he handed are you and have fought not as you served the cause, but as had been each man's like mine. You have shown all Hector's. Enter the city, clip your wives, your friends, tell them your feats, while they with joyful tears wash the congealment from your wounds and kiss the honored gaseous old. <coughs> Give me thy hand. To this great fairy, I'll commend thy acts. Make her thanks bless thee. Thou, day of the world, chain mine armed neck, leap thou, attire and all through proof of harness to my heart, and there ride on the pants triumphing. Lord of lords, mm. O infinite virtue, comest thou smiling from the world's great snare uncaught? My nightingale, we have beat them to their beds. <laughs> what girl? Though gray do something mingle with our younger brown, yet hath we a brain that nourishes our nerves and can get a goal for goal of youth. Behold this man, commend unto his lips thy favoring hand. Kiss it, my warrior. He hath fought today as if a god in hate of mankind hath destroyed in such a shape. I'll give thee, friend, an armor all of gold. It was a king's. Mm, he has deserved it, were it carbuncled like holy Phoebus' car. <laughs> give me thy hand. Through Alexandria, make a jolly march. Bear our hacked targets like the men that owe them. Had our great palace the capacity to camp this host, we would all sup together and drink carouses to the next day's fate, which promises royal peril. Trumpeters! The brazen din blast you the city's ear. Make mingle with our rattling tambourines that heaven and earth may strike their sound together, applauding our approach. If we be not relieved within this hour, we must return to the court of guard. The night is shiny, and they say we shall embattle by the second hour of the morn. This last day was a shrewd one to it. Oh, bear me witness, knight. What man is this? Stand close and list him. Be witness to me, O oh, thou blessed moon. When men revolted shall upon record bear hateful memory. For Enobarbus did before thy face repent. Enobarbus. Peace, hark further. O sovereign mistress of true melancholy, the poisonous damp of night to sponge upon me, that life, a very rebel to my will, may hang no longer on me. Throw my heart against the flint and hardness of my fault, which being dried with grief will break to powder and finish all foul thoughts. Antony, nobler than my revolt is infamous. Forgive me in thine own particular. But let the world rank me and register a master lever and a fugitive. Oh, Antony. <sighs> Speak to him. Uh, let's hear him, for the things he speaks may concern Caesar. Let's do so. But he sleeps. Swoons, rather, for so bad a prayer as his was never yet for sleep. Go we to him. Awake, sir, awake. Speak to us. Hear you, sir. The hand of death hath wrought him. Hark, the drums demurely wake the sleepers. Let us bear him to the court of guard. He is of note. Our hour is fully out. Come on, then. He may recover yet. Operation is today by sea. We please them not by land. For both, my lord. I would they have fight in the fire or in the air. We'd fight there, too. But this it is. 
our foot upon the hills adjoining to the city shall stay with us. Order for sea is given. They put forth the haven where their appointment we may best discover and look upon their endeavor. But being charged, we will be still by land, which as I take we shall, for his best force is forth to man his galleys, to the vales, and hold our best advantage. Yet they are not joined. Where yon pine does stand, I shall discover all. I'll bring thee word straight how tis like to go. All is lost. This foul Egyptian hath betrayed me. My fleet hath yielded to the foe, and yonder they cast their caps up and carouse together like friends long lost. Triple turned whore! Tis thou hast sold me to this novice, and my heart makes only wars on thee. Bid them all fly! For when I am revenged upon my charm, I have done all. Bid them fly! Be gone! Oh, fort of sun, thy uprise shall I see no more. Fortune and Antony part here. Even here do we shake hands. I'll come to this. The hearts that spaniled me at the heels to whom I gave the wish their wishes do discandy, melt their sweets on blossoming Caesar, and this pine is barked that overtopped them all. Betrayed I am. Well, this false soul of Egypt this grave charm whose eye becked forth my wars and called them home, whose bosom was my crown it, my chief end like a bright gypsy hath, and fast and loose beguiled me to the very heart of loss. What, Eros, Eros! Ah, thou spell, avaunt! Why is my lord enraged against his love? Vanish, or I shall give thee thy deserving and blemish Caesar's triumph. Let him take thee and hoist thee up to the shouting plebeians. Follow his chariot like the greatest spot of all thy sex. Most monster-like be shown for poor diminutives, for dolts, and let patient Octavia plow thy visage up with her prepared nails. Tis well, thou gone well to live, the better for thou fellst into my fury, for one death might have prevented many. Eros, ho! The shirt of Nessus is upon me. Teach me, Alcides, thou mine ancestor, thy rage. Let me lodge Lycus on the horns of the moon, and with those hands that grasp the heaviest club subdue my worthiest self. The witch shall die. For the young Roman boy, she hath sold me, and I fall under his plot. She dies for it. Eros, ho! Help me, my women. Oh, he's more mad than Thelamon, for his shield, the boar of Thessaly, was never so embossed. The monument, there lock yourself, and send him word you are dead. The soul and body reave no more in parting than greatness going off. To the monument. Mardian, go on. Tell him I have slain myself. Say that the last word I spoke was Antony and word it prithily, piteously. Hence, Mardian, and bring me how he takes my death. To the monument! Eros, thou yet beholdst me? I noble lord sometime we see a cloud that's dragonish a vapor sometime like a bear or a lion a towered citadel a pendant rock Ooh, a forked mountain or a blue promontory with trees upon it that nod unto the world mocked our eyes with air thou hast seen these signs they are Black Vesper's pageants. Aye, my lord. That which is now a horse, even with a thought. The rack dislims, makes it indistinct as water is in water. It does, my lord. My good knave Eros, now thy captain is even such a body. Here I am, Antony, yet cannot hold 
this visible shape my knave. I made these wars for Egypt and the queen whose heart I thought I had, or she had mine. Which whilst it was mine, I had annexed unto it a million more now lost. She, Arabs, has packed cards with Caesars and false played my glory unto an enemy's triumph. Nay, read not, gentle Eros. There is left us ourselves to end ourselves. Oh, thy vile lady, she has robbed me of my sword. No, Antony, uh, my mistress loved thee and her fortunes mingled with thine entirely. And saucy eunuch peace. She hath betrayed me and shall die the death. Death of one person can be paid but once, and that she has discharged. What thou wouldst do is done unto thy hand. The last she spake was, uh, Antony, most noble Antony. Then in the midst of a tearing groan did break the name of Antony. It was divided between her heart and lips. She rendered life, thy name so buried in her. Dead then. Dead. An arm, Eros. The long day's task is done, and we must sleep. But thou departst hence safe, dost pay thy labor richly. Go. Off. Fuck off. The sevenfold shield of Ajax cannot keep the battery from my heart. Oh, cleave my sides. Heart. Let's be stronger than thy continent. Crack thy frail case. A pace, Eros, a pace. Ah, no more a soldier. Bruise pieces, go. You have been nobly born from me a while. I will overtake thee, Cleopatra, and weep for my pardon. So it must be. For now all length is torture since the torch is out. Lie down and stray no farther. Now all labor mars what it does. <laughs> the very force entangles itself with strength. Seal then, and all is done. Eros! I come, my queen. Eros! Stay for me. Our souls do couch on flowers, will hand in hand, and with our sprightly port make the ghosts gaze. Dido and her Aeneas shall want troops, and all the haunt be ours. Eros! Eros! What would my lord? Since Cleopatra died, I've lived in such dishonor that the gods detest my baseness. I, that with my sword ported the world and o'er green Neptune's back with ships made cities, condemn myself to lack the courage of a woman less noble mind than she, which by her death our Caesar tells, I am conqueror of myself. Thou art sworn, Eros, that when the exigent should come, which now has come indeed, when I should see thee behind me, the inevitable prosecution of my disgrace and horror, that on my command thou then wouldst kill me. Do it. The time has come. Thou strikes not me, to Caesar thou defeatest. Put color in thy cheek. The gods withhold me. Shall I do that which all the Parthian darts, though enemy lost aim and could not? Eros, thou, wouldst thou be windowed gr in great Rome and see thy master thus with pleached arms, bending down his corrigible neck, his face subdued to penetrative shame, whilst the wheeled seat of fortune Caesar drawn before him branded his baseness that ensued? I would not see it. Come then, with a wound I must be cured. Draw that thy honest sword, which thou hast worn most useful for thy country. Oh, sir, pardon me. When I did make thee free, swore'st thou not then to do this when I made thee. Do it at once, for thy preceding services are all but accidents unpurposed. Draw and come. Turn from me then, that noble countenance wherein the worship of the whole world lies. Lowly. My sword is drawn. Well, let it do at once the thing why thou hast drawn it. My dear master, my captain and my emperor, let me say before I strike this bloody stroke, 
Farewell. To said man and farewell. Farewell, great chief. Shall I strike now? Now, Eros. Why? There then. Thus I do escape the sorrow of Antony's death. Thrice nobler than myself. Thou teachest me, O valiant Eros, what I should, and thou couldst not. My queen and Eros have by their brave instruction got upon me a nobleness in record. But I will be a bridegroom in my death and run into it as to a lover's bed. Come then, Eros. Thy master dies, thy scholar, to do thus. I learned of thee. How? Oh. Oh. Not, not dead? Not dead? The guard, ho! Now dispatch me! What's the noise? <laughs> I am, I have done my work ill, friends. I'll make an end of what I have begun. Uh, the star is falling. Oh, and the time is at his period. Alas and woe. That loves me, strike me dead. Not I. Nor I. Nor anyone. Thy death and fortunes bid thy followers fly. This sword, but shown to Caesar with this tidings, shall enter me with him. Where is Anthony? There, Diamond. There. Lives he? Wilt thou not answer, man? Art thou there, Diamond? Draw thy sword and give me sufficing strokes for death. Most absolute lord, my mistress Cleopatra sent me to thee. When? Did she send thee? Now, my lord. Where is she? Locked in her monument. She had a prophesying fear of what hath come to pass, for when she saw, which never shall be found, you did suspect she had disposed with Caesar, and that your rage would not be purged. You word she was dead, but fearing since how it might work, hath sent me to proclaim the truth. And I am come, I dread, too late. Too late, good diamond. Oh my guard, I pray thee. What ho, the emperor's guard, the guard, what ho, come, come, your lord calls. Bear me, good friends, where Cleopatra bides, tis the last service I shall command you. Oh, or oh, are we, sir? <laughs> You may not live to wear all your true followers out. Most heavy day. Nay, hey, good my fellows, do not please sharp fate to grace it with your sorrows. Bid that welcome which comes to punish us, and we punish it, seeming to bear it lightly. Take me up. I have led you oft. Carry me now, good friends, and have my thanks for all. Oh, Charmian, I will never go from hence. Be comforted, good dear madam. Oh, all strange and terrible events are welcome, but comforts we despise. Our sighs of sorrow makes it. Oh, now is he dead? His death's upon him, but not dead. Look out the other side of your monuments. His guard <laughs> have brought him hither. Oh, son, where in the great sphere thou movest in dark, stand in the very shore of the world. Antony, Antony, Antony. Help, help, I will see him hither. Peace. Not Caesar's valor hath overthrown Antony, but Antony's hath triumphed on itself. 
So it should be that number Antony should conquer Antony, but what is so? I am dying, Egypt. Dying. Uh, Only I hear importune death a while, until of many thousand kisses the poor last I lay upon thy lips. I do not, dear. Dear my lord, pardon, I dare not, lest I be taken. Not the imperious show of the full fortune Caesar ever shall be broached with me if knife, drug, serpent have edge, sting, or operation. I am safe. Your wife, Octavia, with her modest eyes and still conclusion shall become. Come, Antony, help me. My women, we must draw the up. Good friends! Oh, quick, or I am gone. Your sport indeed, how heavy weighs, my lord. Our strength is all gone into heaviness that makes the weight. I, had I great Juno's power, strong wing Mercury would fetch thee up and set thee by Jove's side. You come a little, wishes wherever fools come. Come, 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 come. come. Welcome. Well, thou hast lived, quickened with kissing, and my lips that power, thus would I wear them out. Heavy sight. I am dying, Egypt. Dying. Give me some wine. Let me speak a little. No, let me speak. Let me rail so high that the false housewife fortune break her wheel, provoked by my offense. A word, sweet queen of Caesar, seek your honor with your safety. No. Oh. They do not go together. <sighs> Gentle, hear me. None about Caesar trust. Peculious. My resolution and my hands I'll trust. Nine about Caesar. The miserable change now at my end lament nor sorrow at. But please your thoughts in feeding them with those my former fortunes wherein I lived. The greatest prince of the world. The noblest. And do now not basely die, not cowardly put off my helmet to my country. A Roman, by a Roman, valiantly vanquished. Oh, my spirit is going. Oh, I can no more. Noblest of men, was I? Hast thou no care of me? I shall abide in this a world which in thy absence is no better than a sty. See, my, my whim. Oh. The crown of the earth doth melt. Lord. Oh, whither is the garland of the war? Soldier's ball is fallen. <gasps> Young boys and girls are level now with men. The odds is gone and there is nothing left remarkable beneath the visiting moon. Oh, 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 quietness, lady. Oh, she is dead too, her sovereign. Lady. Madam. Oh, madam. Madam. Oh, Royal oh. Egypt Empress. Peace, peace, Iris. <laughs> No more, but e'en a woman, and commanded by such poor passion as the maid that milks and does the meanest chores. It were for me to throw my scepter at the injurious gods to tell them that this world did equal theirs till they had stolen our jewel. Oh, but not. 
patience is sottish and impatience does become become a dog that's mad then is it sin to rush into the secret house of death ere death dare come to us how do you women what good cheer why how now charmian my noble girls oh women women look our lamp is spent it's out good sirs take heart we'll bury him and then what's brave what's noble let's do it after the high roman fashion and make death proud to take us come away this case of the huge spirit now is cold oh women women come we have no friend but resolution and the briefest end go to him dolabella dolabella bid him yield being so frustrated tell him she mocks the pauses that he makes caesar i shall Wherefore is that? And what art thou that darest appear thus to us? I am called Decretus. Mark Anthony I served, who best was worthy, best to be served. Whilst he stood up and spoke, he was my master, and I wore my life to spend upon his haters. If thou please to take me to thee as I was to him, I'll be to Caesar. If thou pleasest not, I yield thee up my life. What is thou sayest? I say, O oh Caesar, Antony is dead. A breaking of so great a thing should make a greater crack. The round world should have shook lions into civil streets and citizens to their dens. The death of Antony is not a single doom in the name lay a moiety of the world. He is dead, Caesar, not by a public minister of justice, nor by a hired knife, but that self hand, which writ his honor in the acts it did, hath with the courage, which the heart did lend it, splitted the heart. This is his sword. I robbed his wound of it. Behold of it stained with his most noble blood. Look, you sad friends. The gods rebuke me, but it is tidings to watch the eyes of kings. And strange it is that nature must compel us to lament our most persisted deeds. His taints and, taints and honors wagged equal with him. A rarer spirit never did steer humanity, but you gods will give us some faults to make us men. Caesar is touched. When such a spacious mirror is set before him, he needs must see himself. Oh, Antony, I have followed thee to this, but we do launch diseases in our bodies. I must perforce have shown to thee such a declining day or look on thine. We could not stall together in the whole world. But yet let me lament with tears as sovereign as the blood of hearts that thou, my brother, my competitor in top of all design, my mate in empire, friend and companion in the front of war, the arm of mine own body and the heart were mine, his thoughts did kindle that our stars unreconcilable should divide our equalness to this, Hear me, good friends, but I will tell you at some meter season, the business of this man looks out of him. We'll hear him, what he says. Whence are you? A poor Egyptian yet, the queen, my mistress, confined in all she has, her monument, of thy intense desires instruction, that she preparedly may frame herself to the way she's forced to. Did her have good heart. 
She soon shall know of us by some of ours, how honorable and how kindly we determine for her. For Caesar cannot live to be ungentle. So the gods preserve thee. Come hither, Priscilius. Go and say, we purpose her no shame. Give her what comforts the quality of her passion shall require less than her greatness by some mortal stroke she do defeat us. For her life in Rome would be eternal, our triumph. Go. And with your speediest, bring us what she says and how you find of her. Caesar, I shall. Gal, let's go you along. Where's Dolabella? To second Priscilius. Dolabella! Let him alone. If I remember now how he's employed, he shall in time be ready. Go, go with me to my tent, where you shall see how hardly I was drawn into this war. How calm and gentle I proceeded still in all my writings. Go with me and see what I can show in this. My desolation does begin to make a better life. Tis paltry to be Caesar. Not being fortune, he's but fortune's knave, a minister of her will. And it is great to do that thing that ends all other deeds, which shackles accidents and bolts up change, which sleeps and never pallets more than the dung, the beggar's nurse and Caesar's. Caesar sends greeting to the queen of Egypt mm. and bids thee study on what fair demands thou means to have him grant thee. What's thy name? My name is Proculeus. Mm. Antony did tell me of you, bade me trust you, but I do not greatly care to be deceived that have no use for trusting. If your master would have a queen, his beggar, you must tell him that majesty to keep decorum must less, no less beg than a kingdom. If he please to give me conquered Egypt for my son, he gives me so much of mine own as I will kneel to him with thanks. Be of good cheer. You're fallen into a princely hand, fear nothing. Make your full reference freely to my Lord, who is so full of grace, that it flows over on all that need. Let me report to him your sweet dependency, and you shall find a conqueror that will pray in aid for kindness, where he for grace is kneeled to. Pray you tell him, I am, I am his fortune's vassal, and I send him the greatness he has got. I hourly learn a doctrine of obedience and would gladly look him in the face. This I'll report, dear lady. Have comfort, for I know your plight is pitied of him that caused it. You see how easily she may be surprised. Guard her till Caesar come. Royal queen, Cleopatra, thou art taken queen. <sighs> quick, quick, good hands. Hold, worthy lady, hold. Do not yourself such wrong, who are in this relief but not betrayed. What of death, too, that rids our dogs of languish? Cleopatra, do not abuse my master's bounty by the undoing of yourself. Let the world see his nobleness well acted, which your death will never let come forth. <laughs> Where art thou, death? Come hither, come, 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 and, and take a queen with many babes and beggars. Oh, temperance lady. Sir. I will eat no meat. I'll not drink, sir. If idle talk will once be necessary, I'll not sleep neither. This mortal house I'll ruin. Do Caesar what he can. No, sir, that I will not wait pinioned at your master's court, nor once be chastised with the sober eye of dull Octavia. Shall they hoist me up and show me to the shouting valetry of censuring Rome? <laughs> Rather, a ditch in Egypt 
Be gentle grave unto me. Rather on Nihilus' mud lay me stark naked and let the water flies blow me into a boring. Rather make my country's high pyramids my giblet and hang me up in chains. You do extend these thoughts of horror further than you shall find cause in Caesar. <sighs> Proculeus, what thou hast done thy master Caesar knows and he hath sent for thee. For the queen, I'll take her to my guard. So, Dolabella, it shall content me best. Be gentle to her. If seized to Caesar, I will speak what you shall please, if you'll employ me to him. Say, I would die. Most noble empress, you have heard of me. I cannot tell. Assuredly, you know me. No matter, sir. What I have heard or known, you'll laugh when boys or women tell their dreams. Is it not your trick? I understand not, madam. Oh, I dreamt there was an Emperor Antony. Oh, such another sleep that I might see, but such another man. If it might please you. Oh, his face was as the heavens, and therein stuck a moon, a sun and moon, which, which kept their course and lighted the little of the earth. A uh, most sovereign creature. His legs bestride the ocean, his reared arm crusted the world, and his voice was property as all the tuned spheres, and that to his friends. But when he meant to quail, and shake the orb, he was as a rattling thunder. <laughs> For his bounty, there was no winter in it, and autumn it was that grew the more by reaping. His delights were dolphin-like, they showed his back above the element they lived in, and his livery walk into crowns and crown nets. Realms and islands were as plates dropped from his pocket. Cleopatra. Think you there was or might be such a man as this I dreamt of? Gentle madam, no. You lie up to the hearing of the gods. But if there be nor ever were one such, it's past the size of dreaming. Nature wants stuff to vie strange forms with fancy, yet imagine an Antony were nature's peace against fancy, condemning shadows quite. Hear me, good madam. Your loss is as yourself great, and you bear it as answering to the weight. Would I never, would I might never o'ertake pursued success, but I do feel by the rebound of yours a grief that smites my very heart at root. I thank you, sir. Know you what Caesar means to do with me. I am loath to tell you what I would you knew. Nay, pray you, sir. Though he be honorable. He'll lead me then in triumph. Madam, he will, I know it. Make way there, Caesar. Which is the queen of Egypt? It is the emperor, madam. Arise, you shall not kneel. I pray you rise, rise, Egypt. Sir, the gods will have it thus. My master and my lord, I must obey. Take to you no hard thoughts. The record of what injuries you did us though written in our flesh, we shall remember as things but done by chance. Oh, soul, sir, of the world, I cannot project mine own cause so well to make it clear, but do confess I have been laden with like frailties, which before have often finished our sex. Cleopatra, no, we will extenuate rather than enforce. If you apply yourself to our intents, which towards you are most gentle, you shall find a benefit in this change. But if you seek to lay on me a cruelty by taking Antony's course, you shall bereave yourself of my good purposes and put your children to that destruction which I'll guard them from if they're on you rely. I'll take my leave. And may 
through all the world, tis yours and we, your scrutchians and your signs of conquest shall hang in what place you please. Here, my good Lord. You shall advise me in all for Cleopatra. This is the brief of money, plate, and jewels I am possessed, possessed of. Tis exactly valued, not petty things admitted. Where is Seculus? Here, madam. This is my treasurer. Let him speak, my lord, upon his peril, that I have reserved to myself nothing. Speak, Seculus. Speak the truth, Seculus. Madam, I had rather seal my lips than to my peril speak that which is not. What have I kept back? Enough to purchase what you have made known. Nay, blush not, Cleopatra. I approve your wisdom in the deed. See, Caesar, all oh, behold how pomp is followed. Mine will now be yours, and should we shift estates, yours would be mine. The ingratitude of the seculus does even make me wild. Oh, slave of no more trust than love that hired. What goest thou back? Thou shalt go back, I warrant thee, but I'll catch thine eyes, though they have had wings. Slave, soulless villain, dog, oh, rarely base. Good queen, let us entreat you. Oh, Caesar, what a wounding shame is this that thou vow safing here to visit me, doing the honor of thy lordliness to one so meek that, that mine own servant should parcel the sum of my disgraces by addition of his envy. <laughs> Say, good Caesar, that I some lady trifles have reserved emollient toys, things of such dignity as we greet modern friends withal, and say some nobler token I have kept apart for Livia and Octavia. Mm -hmm. To induce their meditation must I be unfolded with one that I have bred? Oh, the gods, it smites me beneath the fall I have. Prithee, go hence or I shall show the cinders of my spirits through the ashes of my chance. Wert thou a man, wouldst thou wouldst have mercy on me. Forbear, Seleucus. Hmm. Be it known that we, the greatest, are misthought for things that others do. And when we fall, we answer others' merits in our name and therefore to be pitied. Cleopatra, not what you have reserved nor what acknowledged put we in the role of conquest. Mm -hmm. Still, be it yours, bestow it at your pleasure and believe Caesar is no merchant to make prize with you of things that merchants soul. Therefore be cheered, make not your thoughts your prisons. No, dear queen, for we intend so to dispose you as yourself shall give us counsel. Feed and sleep. Our care and pity is so much upon you that we remain your friend, and so, adieu. Oh, my master and my lord. Not so, adieu. He words me, girls, he words me that I should not be noble to myself. Oh, but hark thee, Charmian. Finish, good lady. The bright day is done and we are for the dark. Oh, hi thee again. I have spoke already and it is provided. Ugh. Go put to in haste. Uh, madam, I will. Where's the queen? Uh, behold, sir. <sighs> Dolabella. Madam. As there to sworn by your command, which my love makes religion to obey, I tell you this, Caesar through Syria intends his journey, and within three days you with your children will he send before. Make your best use of this. I have performed your pleasure and my promise. Dolabella, I shall remain your debtor. 
I, your servant, adieu, good queen. I must attend on Caesar. Farewell, and thanks. Now, Iris, what thinkest thou? Thou, an Egyptian puppet, shall be shown in Rome as well as I. Mechanic slaves with greasy aprons, rules, and hammers shall uplift us to the view. And in their thick breaths, rank of gross diet, shall we be enclouded and forced to drink their vapor? Oh, the gods forbid. Oh, nay, tis most certain Iris saucy Lysiters will catch us like strumpets and scald rhymers ballad us out a tune. The quick comedians extemporally will stage us and present our Alexandrian revels. Antony shall be brought drunken forth and I shall see some squeaking Cleopatra boy, my greatness, a posture of a whore. Oh, the good gods. Nay, that's certain. I'll never see it, for I am sure my nails are stronger than mine eyes. Well, that's the way to fool their preparation and to conquer their most absurd intents. Now, Charmian, go show me my women like a queen. Go fetch my best attires. I am again for Sindus to meet Mark Antony. Sarah Iris, go. <sighs> Now, noble Charmian, will dispatch indeed, and when thou hast done this chore, I'll give thee leave to play till doomsday. Bring our crown and all. Wherefore this noise? Here is a rural fellow that will not be denied your highness's presence. He brings you figs. Let him come in. What a poor instrument may do a noble deed. Brings me liberty. My resolution placed and I have nothing of woman in me. Now from head to foot, I am marble constant. Now the fleeting moon, no planet is of mine. This is the man. Avoid and leave him. Hast thou the pretty worm of Nihilus there that kills and pains not? Truly, I have him. But I would not be the party that should desire you to touch him, for his biting's immortal. Those that do die of it do seldom or never recover. Rememberest thou any that have died on it? Very many. Men and women, too. I heard of one of them no longer than yesterday, a very honest woman, but something given to lie, as a woman should not do but in the way of honesty. How she died of the biting of it, what pain she felt. Oh, truly, she makes a very good report to the worm, but he that will believe all that they say shall never be saved by half that they do. But this is most fallible. The word, the worm's an odd worm. Get thee hence. Farewell. I wish you all joy of the worm. Farewell. You must think this. Look you, that the worm will do his kind. Aye. Aye. Farewell. Look you, the worm is not to be trusted but in the keeping of wise people, for indeed there is no goodness in the worm. Take thou no care. It shall be heated. Very good. Give it nothing. I pray you, for, for it is not worth the feeding. Will, will it eat me? You must not think I am so simple, but I know the devil himself will not eat a woman. I know that a woman is a dish for the gods, if the devil dress her not. But truly, these same horse and devils do the gods great harm in their women, for in every ten that they make, the devils mar five. <sighs> Get, get thee gone. Farewell. Forsooth, I wish you joy of the worm. Uh, give me my robe and put on my crown. I have, oh, immortal longings in me. Now, no more 
Oh, the juice of Egypt's grape shall moist this lip. Air, air, good Iris, quick. Methinks I hear Antony call. I see him rouse himself to praise my noble act. I hear him mock the luck of Caesar, which the gods give men to excuse their after wrath. Husband, I come. Now to that name, my courage, prove my title. I am fire and air, my other elements I give to baser life. So what have you done? Come then and take the last warmth of my lips. Farewell, kind Charmian, Iris Long, farewell. Oh. Look at the aspect in my lips. Does fall. If thou in nature can so gently part the stroke of death as as a lover's pitch, which hurts and is desired, dost thou lie still? If thou dost vanishest, thou tellst the world it is not worth leave taking. It is all thick cloud and rain that I may say the gods themselves do weep. This proves me base. If she first meet the curled Antony, he'll make demand of her and spend that kiss which is my heaven to have. Come. Come, the mortal wretch, go, and with those sharp teeth, this not intrinsic of my once me, ah, uh, ah, uh. what venomous fool, go oh God be angry, the dispatch, if thou could speak, that I might hear thee call great Caesar ass on police it. Eastern star. Peace. Peace. Dost thou not see my baby at my breast that sucks the nurse asleep? No break. No break. Oh, sweetest. Uh, it's soft as air and gentle. Oh, Anthony. Nay. Oh, I will take thee to. Oh. oh. <laughs> What should I say? In this vile world, so fare thee well. Now boast thee death, in thy possession lies a lass unparalleled. Downy windows, Close and golden Phoebus never be beheld of eyes again so royal. Oh, your, your crown's awry. I'll mend it and then play. Where's the queen? Speak softly. Wake her not. Caesar hath sent. Oh, too slow a messenger. Oh, come, a base dispatch. I partly feel thee. Approach, oh, all's not well. Caesar's beguiled. There's Dolabella sent from Caesar. Call him. What work is here, Charmian? Is this well done? It is well done. And fitting for a princess descended of so many royal kings. Ah, uh, uh, soldier! Uh. How goes it here? All dead. Caesar, thy thoughts touch their effects in this. Thyself art coming to see perform the dreaded act which thou so soughtst to hinder. Away there, away for Caesar. Oh, sir, you are too sure an augurer that you did fear is done. Bravest at the last. She leveled at our purposes and being royal took her own way. The manner of their deaths. I, I do not see them bleed. Who was last with them? A simple countryman that brought her figs, and this was the basket. Poison, then. Oh, Caesar, this Charmian lived, but now she stood and spake. I found her trimming up the diadem on her dead mistress. Trembling she stood, and on the sudden dropped. Oh, noble weakness. 
that they had swallowed poison it would appear by external swelling, but she looks like a sleep as she would catch another Anthony in her strong toil of grace. Here on her breast, there is a vent of blood and something blown. The like is on her arm. This is the Aspic's trail, and these figs leave have slime upon them, such as the Aspic leaves upon the caves of Nile. Most probable that so she died. For her physician tells me she hath pursued conclusions infinite of easy ways to die. Take her, take up her bed and bear her women from the monument. She shall be buried by her Anthony. No grave upon the earth shall clip in it a pair so famous. High events as these strike those that make them. And their story is no less in pity than his glory which brought them to be lamented. Our army shall in solemn show attend this funeral and then to Rome. Come, Dolabella, see high order in this great solemnity. All right, come back in. Thank you so much. This is such a great reading, a very long one. You did a great job. <laughs> uh, join us next week for another great reading. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but we can't wait to find out. All right, have a good night. Thanks. <laughs>